What's up guys? Welcome to the December live show. We are very early this time around. It's Saturday, uh, 1.41 p.m. So welcome for the, uh, for the early birds that are going to get this notification. So notification squad, what up? We have something on the order of 230-ish uh, frags up. Um, and I think that um, Rico from Rico's Reef Tank is going to be coming and hanging out at some point during this show. I'm not exactly sure when. He, um, he mentioned it on his live stream, and of course, he's welcome to, to come in. So, how's everybody doing? How's everybody doing? Steve, where's Rico? He's, well, he's not late. It's like there's a whole 18 minutes before we really start in on on the corals or anything like that. So all you guys are, are super early. So yeah, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. I'm still struggling just a little bit with uh, jet lag. I'm sure that uh, many of you know, for the past 10 days or so I've been in Japan and it's an amazing vacation. We hit it pretty hard though. I went with two of my friends, Lawson and Suzanne, and they're, they've obviously they're a little bit more of a of a fixture nowadays. Um, they kind of show up a lot in my in my vacation videos, and we had planned that that trip out to Japan for quite some time. And I really needed it because I was doing the Tidal Garden stuff full time. I was also basically acting as general contractor on this new building that we're constructing, and it was time that I needed to get away. Having said that, I'm not a very, very good, like, relaxed vacationer. We tend to go pretty hard, and not, not in terms of, like, you know, getting smashed on alcohol or anything like that. It's more along the lines of just we fill our days with tons of activity. So whatever our normal activity level is, multiply it by about, like, 10, and that's what we're doing over there. So, um, you know, we have one of those, just those step counters, and Typically here, I maybe walk a mile a day. It's not, it's not a whole lot. I'm very sedentary. Over there, on average, we were doing about nine miles a day and traveling, like basically zigzagging across the country. So didn't get a ton of relaxation. Had a great adventure. It was a lot of fun. But then coming back here, we had a full 24-hour um, travel schedule just to get back home. So they, they live in western Michigan. I live in Ohio, obviously. But uh, when we woke up, we had to take a three-hour train ride to get to the airport. From the airport, it's another 15 hours in the air or something like that. There's also a layover for me in Minneapolis. By the time I get home, it's another hour drive. And one mile away from my house, there's a traffic accident. Both lanes of traffic stopped. And yeah, we're talking about hour 23 at that point. Not a lot of fun. And so... Again, slowly getting back into this time zone with varying degrees of success. So let's see, what's going on? Paul Blaney, how's it going, Dan? Doing all right, I can't complain. Jeffrey Jones, how's the warehouse going? It's going, um, it's kind of the, this start and stop stutter. So it's either gonna be moving really quickly in patches or there's going to be patches of nothing going on at all. It just depends on scheduling, depends on weather and whatnot. But we are looking to get uh, some of the big stuff installed into the ground later this week. So I think on Tuesday or Wednesday, there's going to be some big excavation going on to install our septic tanks for like the bathrooms and stuff like that. And also, um, there's this big, gigantic rainwater collection cistern that's going to be set in the ground. It's something on the order of like 30 feet by 10 feet by 8 feet or something. It's 10,000 gallons, and it's all concrete. And so that's going to... big hole dropped in by crane. So that's what's going on next. And there's always going to be like some, some nonsense involved in actually getting everything going smoothly and I just try to do it as best as I can. The getting electrical to this building is going to be a straight up adventure. I can already see it going kind of nutty. 
just because I know that they're gonna they're gonna be putting it underground and where they want to be putting this kind of has six other utility can't talk six other utility lines in the ground right there so they're gonna have to dodge probably hand dig and find and not destroy like two gas lines another electric line a water line a data line and a drainage line so have fun with that right uh, domino squad reefing is it snowing in Ohio it is not it's practically like getting to that point where it's gonna be too cold to snow if that's even such a thing because right now it's like it started off today at about 20 degrees and I think the high is like 35 ish it's not it's not terribly warm here and then next week it's gonna get like bitterly cold so I should mention that Monday and Tuesday it looks like it's gonna be warm enough for us to ship um, Wednesday and Thursday it's looking a little sketchy because we're gonna be getting into single digit lows at night so we might have to reschedule any shipments that were normally gonna be going out Wednesday and Thursday so just fair warning on that Andrew Joseph did you go to Kyoto I did um, we spent I guess I'd say two full days there and one of the the, the Kyoto days quote-unquote we took a Shinkansen um, that's one of those high-speed trains to uh, Hiroshima because uh, Lawson, my friend, he's uh, an automotive engineer and he wanted to visit the Mazda plant and museum. And Hiroshima is great because it's also at a time where the, the oysters are in season. And if you've never had like fresh oysters in season from a place that really knows what they're doing when it comes to oysters, it's mind-bogglingly good. So the, the three of us, um, after the, the Mazda Museum tour, we uh, found this like really nice little, uh, nice little restaurant. And I think by the time that we were done, we had ordered six entrees between the three of us. We're total gluttons that day. And then we headed back to Kyoto that day. Nicole McDonald is anyone else here in Nor in uh, Northern California dealing with these fires I've only seen pictures that's rough it seems like every year the the fires seem to get worse or something but that place is having a rough time with it I saw some other people's YouTube channels where you know one guy it, it almost looked like clickbait because it basically said my house burned down but no his house actually burned down and I, I don't know what his channel was about, but I get the feeling that this personality was more of like a, a jokester, prankster type, uh, like usually very upbeat. And you can tell that he's trying to stay in character, and at one point he just breaks down crying. So it's, that's just awful. McKinley Scotty. Hello from Washington State. Hello. I'm trying to think if I've ever been to Washington. I think I have. I've been to Seattle, but it was a million years ago. I think I must have been like five or six years old. I've been meaning to go back because I, I really have no gauge of what it's like in the Pacific Northwest. And I hear it's so nice and I bet I would enjoy it, but I just haven't, haven't been back. Do a conagen system and you can use the byproduct of heated water to heat your tanks. I'm unfamiliar with what that system is. The heating system that we're putting in is pretty advanced. The plumber that we got, I'm very impressed with. He is a certified crazy person when it comes to plumbing. I mean, he's like a plumbing mad scientist. Yeah, like basically a plumbing savant as far as I can tell. And just, just talking with him, he's asking all the right questions. He's giving me all the right details. He's shown me his like work product and it's like space shuttle level plumbing. It's it's pretty fantastic. So I, I'm I'm really eager to to get going on a lot of the internal stuff. He's done all the external uh, plumbing up to this point. Very good stuff. So we shall see. I'll, I'll I'll do a video at some point once all that stuff is more fleshed out. But it's going to be some time. It's snowing in Cincinnati. It's snowing in New York. Snowing in New Hampshire, no snow in Florida. 
Everywhere else it's snowing. Nice, while in Cali half the state is on fire. Mm. I'll take the snow over that, yes. You know, it's crazy because like, I don't think it's possible for Ohio to burn. I mean, that, that sounds like, you know, hold my beer, but um, just everything is like so green here. Like we struggle sometimes just to, to light, you know, a little campfire practically. It's like you have to do a lot of, you know, use a lot of lighter fluid, use a lot of dry, whatever that's called. Is that pitch? I don't know. I don't know. It's hard. <laughs> we don't do it very often. Rico's Reef Tank. Hello, everyone. Hit the thumbs up, everyone. Aren't you supposed to be here? <laughs> like, wh where are you? <laughs> in the car. <laughs> okay. Maybe he's in the car. And if you're in the car, stop texting and driving. <laughs> it's really dangerous. Yeah, what, what are you doing? Live streaming in the car? Don't do that. that. That's another thing that I never quite understood is these people that vlog while they're driving. That is like super dangerous. What the hell are you thinking? I mean, I, I was just thinking, oh, you know, maybe I should have like a have like a camera rig in my car so I can just set the thing and just like, you know, just talk while I'm driving. I'm like, I can't have two cohesive thoughts in my head without almost running somebody over. I so. Your live stream would be like three minutes as you drive to the deli and back. <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Like my, my live streams would be like, they would fit on, uh, it would fit on Instagram. <laughs> it's like I got 60 seconds. That's about right. So the only people here today, Rico, not included yet, it's Ben. So it's just Ben and I today. Uh, he's going to be operating the camera. He's going to be shouting out numbers across the greenhouse at me. Um, the parents, the mom and dad, just landed in Cancun, Mexico, guys. So whatever. Hey, hey I can't even complain. I, I was in Japan just all last week, so it's... I, I'm not allowed to complain, but no, they, they deserve a vacation too. So they're, they're hanging out with some family friends for the next week, enjoying some sunny resort weather in tropical, tropical Yucatan Peninsula, Mexico. I'm a little jealous. So originally I was thinking of that the, the day that they were going to leave was going to be the second, not the ninth today. And so I thought that I was going to be landing the day that they were leaving and like we just simply couldn't make the the schedules line up but it turns out they were leaving a week later but then afterwards it's like I'm still not over my my jet lag I really missed my cats while they were away so long story short I guess I didn't really need to be on another vacation and Lawson and Suzanne are trying to get me to go to Miami in like three weeks for basically during that Christmas to New Year break It's it's hard sometimes, I don't know, after the age of 40, just to be like all jet setting. That's some serious first world problem type talk, but trust me, it's harder than it looks sometimes. It's harder than it looks. Oh, let's see. Uh, Melaine Kinney, make sure his connections are so, so soldered. Laughs. We made a new addition at work. We hired a guy. Let's just say uh, we made the first Ohio's first four-story indoor waterfall. Not cool. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Yeah, water. A lot can go wrong. I mean, we're we're doing um, the what do you call it? The radiant floor heating. So there's five thousand feet of pressurized coil right now sitting out there. And um, they're going to be pouring concrete, not this coming week, but the week after. And he basically said, if they hit a pipe, there's so much pressure in those pipes that it's going to send all that concrete four feet in the air. <laughs> yeah. And at that point, they have to be repaired. And he's charging two fifty a pop <laughs> for every single time they, they hit that line. So typically, they said that they don't hit the lines. It's not really a thing. But just in case... It's going to be a little concrete explosion followed by a bill. So this dude said, Than, you're Asian. Driving is hard enough. It's kind of true. Like, I don't think that we're particularly great drivers, except that we'll drift the hell out of you. <laughs> so 
it was actually kind of funny. Uh, when I was in Japan, um, we got into like a cab. So by the way, one of the days in Japan, uh, this, uh, this viewer, Vlad, um, he uh, is starting like his own liqueur farm and all that stuff. This is going to come back to the whole car thing. Well, he took us all around town that day and uh, we took a couple of cabs. Then the second cab that we took, the one that actually took us back to our hotel, that guy definitely gave me that street racer vibe. Because I was like, I'm like super tired. And I'm like looking around like, we're going a lot faster and a lot more cornery than I'm used to. And he was like whipping around like the parking lot of our hotel. Like just, yeah, it was fast. So. Mario Kart guys? Oh yeah. And Mario Kart. As long as like we don't have Mario Kart in the middle of downtown, we don't get to talk about other people's driving skills. That's like the coolest thing. So if you haven't seen my video on, on my little vacation to Japan, it's like a little touristy thing to do, but everybody gets dressed up in like Mario characters and there's like these little go-kart things. And you literally go through the most busy intersections in Tokyo, like uh, in Shinjuku, in Shibuya, in all these places. Um, Shinagawa, it's like, like you know when, they see, when you see like the masses of people crossing the street and then, then the, all the cars go? In the midst of that are people playing Mario Kart in live action. Amazing place, amazing place. Roscoe's Reef with Scott. Dan, loved your last video and it had me wishing for sushi ever since. Me too, but, uh, and th this is such like a sushi snob sort of thing to say, but Japanese sushi ruins sushi stateside for me hard like really, really hard. A lot of it has to do with like the freshness of the fish, but also just so the way that they prepare it and the way they prepare the rice. It's like simply magnificent over there. And here it's like different, if you mean worse in every way. So I, I, I struggle with that now. So I kind of save like my sushi consumption when I'm over there, until I'm over there and I just, I eat everything in sight. I'm not even gonna lie. Like I've got a huge gut right now, and I'm sure my personal trainer is very, very upset with me. But I, I ate every single moment that I remotely felt hungry or remotely felt something looked good. I ate it. I ate everything. Okay, let me see. Noah Pilkilni. Oh, cool. Do you know any reef groups? Don't know the context of that. But I definitely don't know of any reef groups in Japan, if that's even what that was about. Okay, Sean Lee, so I'm new to the saltwater hobby. Why did the coral open and close like that? Well, this particular coral just might be reacting to something in the environment. So uh, Ben is like standing in front of it, kind of like moving back and forth. And just like the change in light might do something, he's going to shine a flashlight at it. And they can, they can react to light, they can react just to particles in the water that may be something that's going to irritate it or something that's, excuse me, something that's like a food type item that floats by it, it'll grab it. It's a bunch of different reasons for, for corals reacting to their environment. Type 40, hello Than and Stream, what have I missed? Nothing so far. We're actually still like a minute early, so we'll get going in a second here. So type 40, are you still in the UK? I think you're, the last time I heard you were vacationing. Also kind of jealous. I'd like to visit the UK. <clears throat> so Kroger sushi doesn't compare then? No, not really. And someone told me, I think it was actually Ben here that told me this, but sushi that is like sushi grade here in the States, I believe that is just sushi that has been frozen for like two weeks to make sure all the bacteria is dead. So you're really, really losing on, on the freshness going on there. Miami should have some of the freshest sushi around. Um, yeah, one might think. Yeah, stateside is more fast food sushi. There's like some places that have a really good reputation. There's like like Masa in, in New York City and stuff like that. Um, 
There's actually a place in Cleveland that gets its shipment of fish from Japan every day, but still, I mean, fish is such a volatile food stuff. Tough to say. Oh, and it's and and it still needs to be frozen for two weeks. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's no good. Okay, is Rico going to be on today? Possibly. I think he, he's probably on his way over. But it's 2.01 p.m. We can get started. Now, I should have probably at some point have gone over the rules. But let's go over the But it, you would find coral number one and put it in your shopping cart and check out. You have to fully check out in order to get an item. Uh, just having it in your shopping cart doesn't really do anything. Now the shipping state side, it's a flat rate $39.99 and it's free for orders over $250. Uh, in the process, you might be placing multiple orders just to make sure to get the item. In order to do that uh, and not be charged multiple instances of shipping, you want to go ahead and select local pickup slash live sale and just make sure you pay for shipping once there's a shipping module as well that you can buy if you just did uh, live sale shipping the entire time and at the very end you can just purchase that one instance of shipping and you're good or not if you're already over 250. if you happen to end up paying shipping twice don't worry about it we refund okay um real quick the patreon crowd I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm neglecting the Patreon guys because I need to give more Patreon-specific content to you guys. But thank you very much. These guys have all donated at least to the $5 level, and so they get a shout-out during the live show. So thank you, Mark, Alan, Trevor, Kevin, Mark, Samuel, Phil, Robert, Ryan, Dave, Nate, and Steve. Really appreciate it. Any and all uh, funding really helps to do the whole YouTube thing because... Any YouTube creator knows this stuff ain't that easy. It's really not. And so, and Super Chats help out too. Obviously, no pressure because we're selling coral. If you're stateside and just want to like buy corals, that'll do, that'll do. No audio, sound went out. Audio back, okay. So real quick about the audio. For whatever reason, I'm using a wireless microphone here. Um, and for whatever reason, occasionally the audio cuts out. Okay? And oddly, it goes out when I cover rules a lot. <laughs> but, the, okay, so the reason why I'm doing the, the wireless audio is I have a second guy here for when uh, I have a guest over. Because having two people with one mic doesn't work out so well but um yeah so just if the, if the audio goes out i'm sorry stick with me i'm not going to do anything and it'll just fix itself so yeah let let me by, by all means let me know um if the audio cuts out just so i know to like at least stop talking <laughs> and not wasting my breath but it's, it's a particular bug that has to do with these wireless mics, but I need the two mics, assuming this guy actually shows up. All right. All right, let's, let's get this going. Okay, so the first coral, Paleophila grandis, and Ben is on, what, the 30-second shot clock? 30 seconds? Ah, I should mention these. So I've got, I never do giveaways, right? I'm like the most I'm like the, the most non-generous person when it comes to these things. But I've got two auto feeders made by Eheim, nice German brand. 
got this guy here, and I've got his bigger brother right here. And you can actually almost see through it because there's some green in there. But I will be uh, just randomly sending those out to anybody that purchases a live sale item during this show. Um, TLD Ohio, are you still allowing local pickup? Yes, we just need to schedule um, a local pickup uh, thingy. A thing, what are those called? Appointments. Number two. Okay. And let's see, one sec. I need to get to this. This is call number two. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah. So I'm just trying to fix my, my little view here because things got kind of weird just there for just a sec. Let me try this again. Okay. Okay. I guess that's as good as it's going to be. So yeah, like I said, um, we were originally going to say something like there needs to be like a purchase threshold of a certain dollar amount. Nah, that's almost like adding more work to, to, to make sure that the people had paid enough during... No, I don't care if somebody buys one coral and gets it shipped to them. I don't care. Number three. <clears throat> Number three. Type 40, anyone know how to super chat on the YouTube app? Thanks for the shout out, dude. Um, I personally don't know. And I, I wonder if it's also country related. Like I said, if you are overseas, like in the UK and stuff like that, some countries don't allow super chat. So it might be a geographical thing. Um, you might want to pay attention to that. Rossi's Reef Tank. That Japan video was amazing. Keep them coming. Thank you very much. I had a great time. Uh, this is number what, three, you said? Okay. You know what's weird? Uh, I have it set correctly to number three, and I don't remember actually changing it to number three. <laughs> yeah. Number four. Number four. Wow, it's like subconscious. Doing this live show stuff is becoming like reflex. That's very weird. I'm like, I'm like missing time. Like the, uh, the jet lag is getting to the point where I'm like missing time. Now it's like, we're on, we're on number 56? Oh, okay. <laughs> Hopefully that went well. So for the for those folks that are kind of new to the live show, when you see the, the lighting of the coral change, uh, we have an LED blue flashlight that just kind of highlights some, some of the fluorescence to give you an idea of what it's going to be like under different lighting. Like uh, we're currently using a lot of T5 right now, so it doesn't have that insane blue color that you might be used to seeing on a lot of... Um, a lot of online sites like we we tend to stay more towards like the daylight spectrum 10k 15k ish rather than like the full insane uh full led actinic coloration i guess mm -mm -mm. <clears throat> uh mind boggle 100 fan i've been hit with slow tissue necrosis after forgetting to switch the tank heater on. Uh, long story short, should I start over from scratch? If not, how long before introducing use SPS? Uh, the thing that I've always tried to do uh, when you run into slow tissue necrosis is to frag the corals down and just hope that one little, little nibble of it survives. Um, Generally speaking, dipping doesn't really do a whole lot, at least in my experience it hasn't, but that's something you can try. Um, that tends to have like the, the best success of kind of like rejuvenating the tank, and you can do it in the same tank. You don't, I, don't, I don't think you ever really have to let it lie follow or anything like that. Let's see. So right now we're slowly getting into that, that winter coloration of these zoas. Uh, they tend to, I don't know, I think that the, the, the coloration seems a, a bit more concentrated than I'm used to seeing. 
So, suited up, what's special? Um, nothing. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of strange, but this past month or two three months ago, I was like looking through my closet and realized that like everything I owned is about four or five years old, and about the vast majority, eighty ninety percent of it, I didn't really wear anymore, and I haven't worn in years, and so I just did a huge culling of my wardrobe. So I just got rid of as really as much as I could like I cut everything and I was down to just just like bare bones and I went to a custom tailor and basically rebuilt my, my wardrobe from scratch so that's that's been fun so now like my whole wardrobe kind of looks like this <laughs> and sometimes like especially when you work at home you have to do little tricks to kind of keep yourself professional. It's really easy to wake up in pajamas and stay in pajamas all day. And I know Ben probably doesn't care, but like subconsciously, if your boss is like wearing pajamas all day, you can only only have so much respect for this individual. Like like he's like shaking his head like it doesn't matter. Trust me. Trust me. It matters. <laughs> so, anyway. <clears throat> How much were the Sunny D's? I don't know. I deleted it. <laughs> Sunny D's was number five, forty dollars. Forty dollars. Uh, Noah, what causes STN? I don't think that people really know. That's kind of one of those one of those little mysteries of reef keeping, unfortunately. Um, what's a good coral for a shaded area? Uh, lots of corals could probably do pretty well. Um, my first choice would probably be something like Blastomusa. Leptoceras isn't too bad. I mean, there's a lot of things that do pretty well in the shade. Um, some of the larger polyp stony corals even. Trachy scolies. Jamie, hello, we're on our way. All our plans got switched around. No worries. So Jamie is Mrs. Rico. Hello. Robert, hi Than. I went scuba diving for the first time last month. Did you enjoy it? That's one of my favorite things to do. I love scuba diving. I don't do it nearly enough, obviously, being in in sunshiny tropical Ohio of all of twenty degrees outside, we don't necessarily have great locations or great weather to do scuba diving but I try whenever possible to get out and do it at least once a year it's great but yeah let me know did you did you enjoy it are there any other divers out there I think that people in this hobby if they can I mean it's it's taxing on some people with with health conditions like I know that one guy suffered from like a burst lung when he was younger and simply put, can't go scuba diving because of the, the, the water pressure messes with his uh, pre-existing injuries. But it's kind of nice to get that perspective of what a natural reef looks like, what corals look like in that reef, what types of corals under what types of rock, things like that. I mean, it's, it's kind of good to have that perspective. Um, when I was in Japan, this shop owner, he um, went diving in... Australia with his supplier and they went and he took like all these measurements lighting measurements to kind of like dial in like the perfect light for you know the animals that he's acquiring and he actually went to a very very large like multinational conglomerate in Japan to work on a lighting technology per his specifications and I still to this day don't, have no idea how that's even possible like can you imagine in, in the U.S. going, knocking on the door of, I don't know, what's a big manufacturer here, like Whirlpool or something, or um, GE, and be like, I want to create a new type of LED. And I'm the owner of Tidal Gardens, like on that scale. I don't think that I would even get a phone number to call, right? 
but over there, they're they're totally okay with working with this with this individual, and they cranked out some prototype that has this really interesting light quality to it. So, anyway, I'm really interested to see how that light performs. I'd love to get my hands on one once they actually are out of that kind of that alpha stage. So we'll see. Type forty, a five pound donation. Thank you so much. In Super Chat. Super Chat doesn't work on the app apparently. It only works when you go on the website. Okay, good to know. Good to know. And thanks again. This is like this is not the first time you've given a, a Super Chat donation, so I really appreciate it. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, um, one of our other um, one, one one of the other uh, I guess like fans viewers on Title Gardens. Uh, his name is Vlad. He's the one who actually took us to that sh to the that reef store. Took us to like a bunch of food places. Took us to Tokyo Sky Tree, to the Sumida Aquarium, where we saw um, those that Takashi Amano uh, display of the of the freshwater plants at aquariums. And he was such a gracious host. I couldn't, I can't say thank you enough. So, so Vlad, if you're watching, thank you again. If you ever make it to the U.S., we'll hook you up. So, and that goes for anybody that we meet overseas. There's, there's plenty of people that I owe favors to. <laughs> Such gracious hosts overseas. And I do want to make a, a trip to Europe. I haven't been to Europe in so long, and there's like so many people now over there that I want to touch base with. <clears throat> Robert, yes, it, was, it wasn't exactly a lot of fun. I had trouble with my swimming, kept hitting the bottom or floating to the top. Yeah, buoyancy control is one of those skills that you kind of have to refine. Like people don't really realize, but just like just the breathing, when you breathe in all the air, um, it quickly expands and then you start to, to basically start floating. But as you float up, the pressure changes and it expands more. And so you start floating faster and faster. And that's kind of dangerous. Um, and then conversely, if you exhale all this air, you'll start to sink. But as the pressure starts acting on you, it squeezes even more, and you start f coming down faster. So your, the control of your breathing as it pertains to buoyancy, it's kind of like this uh, acquired skill that you just kind of have to practice and know like, how your breathing affects your, your space in the column, in the water column. Went diving in Cyprus, best experience ever. If you haven't done it, you should. I want to dive everywhere. <laughs> I'm a free diver, I live in Florida. Free diving is an interesting skill too. Um, I, I, I've, I really haven't tried it or really haven't done it to any real success. I haven't like strapped on the weights and like just gone down, um, but I'm I'm really interested to feel what like the mammalian dive reflex feels like. So if you guys don't know, um, if you if you dive like to a certain depth, the pressure acting on your body like triggers this like weird change in your body. So your heart rate starts to slow, uh, and you actually consume less oxygen in in your body. So you're able to uh, to hold your breath for a lot longer if you've developed that skill. And so I follow um, some people on Instagram, like there's this um, lady that works in uh, Bimini, the Bahamas, at a shark research lab. And she does all of her stuff free diving because the bubbles aggravate the sharks. And so she's able just to go down there for like three minutes, four minutes at a time or something like that, just free diving and hanging out with these sharks. It's very cool. Yeah, the past video mentioned these Japanese lights. The, the prototypes seem interesting. Yeah, um, and th they kind of had some questions about like the, the U.S. market. I just told them like the U.S. market likes a lot of bells and whistles that are probably kind of irrelevant, but they're kind of expected in these lighting models. But I just think it's interesting that they can make LEDs from scratch. It's not like a, a situation where you're combining like five or six LEDs and dialing in each color to get an, a particular spectrum. Like they are wholesale making just the LED uh, to a very specific 
parameters. So I, th I thought that was kind of interesting. And they're weird, like they were completely encapsulated in ceramic. So it looks like a sugar cube. It doesn't look like a clear glass thing with a little chip there. It's like a little ceramic thing, like a little tile. And so I think that also helps with the heat uh, distribution. So they don't require any lights or anything, um, anything of the sort. Okay, uh, 40B Nasty. Any torches today for sale? I don't think so. Maybe we do? We have a torch? No, not torches. Sorry, yeah. No, I think we, we might have a hammer, but probably not a torch. We haven't had torches in a really long time. Than, I honestly think you do yourself an injustice. Title Guards is hugely appreciated. Thanks. We must be having some huge like uh, delay, because I'm noticing like where the conversation is uh, compared to where I've spoken it, and it's like usually it's thirty seconds, but it seems like a little bit more now. I could be wrong. Type 40, if you come to Europe, please make a meetup. I try my best to get there. I'll certainly do the, I'll certainly announce any kind of meetup. I was, so, a, a quick story about Vlad. I don't know what Vlad looks like. Um, he's Caucasian in Japan, meaning he'd be pretty easy to spot, but he's not the only Caucasian in Japan, right? So, I, I don't know what he looks like. And we're meeting in like a very, very, very busy area of Shibuya, it's if you know what the, like this dog statue is in in Shibuya, it, we're we're meeting there, which is like a famous meeting spot, which means everyone's meeting everyone there. And he says like, and I was like, well, do you know what I look like? Because I'm on these live streams and stuff. He's like, yes, I I, I I saw your last live stream. I know what you look like. I'm like, my last live stream, I was dressed as Aquaman. <laughs> I'm like, I don't look like that. <laughs> but. Kidding aside, he, he's very familiar with that look, so that's, that's so we found each other. <clears throat> okay. Uh, what's the best coral for beginners? Mm, you could try like leathers, you can try mushrooms, and I think I heard a truck, so that's probably Mr. Rico. He's got a big truck. It's very noticeable sounding in my driveway. Uh, green stuff on. Rico just pulled in. Somebody else probably could hear it. Oh, by the way, these Captain America Pallies, that's the best I've seen them look in a really, 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 really long time. They almost never looked that quite that good. Sorry, I'm like I'm messing with my, my broadcasting software just to make sure that like uh, my framing looks okay. The, the this software freaks me out sometimes. Osiris D O A. Any Blastamusa today? There should be. We probably have uh, a good number here. R V Gaming, nice outfit. Thank you. Oh, it's nothing. I don't try at all. No, it's. I went to a custom tailor and I, and I had all custom clothing made. If you missed that story, I basically got rid of all my older clothing and built a new custom. Hey, what's up? Hello. Come on in. Hey. <laughs> you guys are late, but clearly you guys had some time to fill up on all the we have all little goodies. Her lady for Lula Rose, her new business, changed plans and our time. So from six o'clock to like, I can only sleep a little bit. <laughs> Feel free to grab a seat if you'd like. All right, so I'm gonna mic you up for, for just a sec. So number twenty-six. All right. So let's get you into frame here. But yeah, just leave it. Otherwise, it's gonna get a little too toasty in here. All right. 
<laughs> yeah. All right, so let's, I'm going to clip this right here. And go ahead and just like leave this right by your food. Okay. Good. All right, so let me see. Hello, hello, hello. Can you guys hear him okay? Or is that too loud? No, it looks like it's probably right in a good range, right? Yeah, it looks good. Yep. All right. Good? Yes. So how long you stand? Not that long, guys. Not that long? He's, he's a busy man. He's a busy man. So what's going on? I screamed about a Pico, his Pico. Yeah, do you have a Pico now? No, I do not. So are you thinking of, uh, of still getting like a really ginormous like 12 foot tank and all that? Yes, that's really going to happen. <laughs> so I'm wondering, because one day I think I'm, I am going to get um, a show tank. Just because it's, you know, we're talking about having a calling card, right? Yes. And I haven't really had a show tank in forever. So, you know, I think that it might be nice to actually get something like that going. And I'm thinking about having it really large. Really large as well. So what are you asking or saying? You want to go in competition? No. Oh. What? <laughs> wait, 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 what? No, so... It's just it's like... How like large this, is large on your end? What are you thinking about? Like 12 feet by 4 feet by... Same. Same dimension as mine. By 6 feet deep. Well, you can have that one. That would be fun. You already certified in scuba diving, so have fun with that. I'm not that. Cleaning You're not cleaning that? Yeah. <clears throat> so the city's too, too loud. loud. Yeah. Too loud. It's, it's turn you down. All right. All right. Thanks, Rozzy. Rozzy, the great supporter. <laughs> they're, they're, making fun, they're making fun of you eating. Oh, yeah. That's all right. People hate that. People, people like when, when I used to eat on stream, they're like, oh, he's eating. I'm out of here. Yeah. So Sorry, we'll listen, I'm eating some gummy bears to give me some flavor because I'm sure Than sitting right here after eating uh, Burger King's onions. He doesn't want to smell that. The title Water is Aquarium. Your tank off. Rico's very sensitive, so you have to be careful what you say around him. He has very thin skin and a temper. <laughs> oh, Rozzy, how sweet. Now that you're now that you're getting more into like into selling, I'm I'm just get, I'm just like warning you in advance. You're gonna like run into some situations that you never planned on before that are just gonna like set you off. That's not hard to do. Everybody, I think, that knows me on my channel, that's, like, pretty easy. But I really, honestly, I really don't want to be like you when it comes to doing this. Like, it's hard not to because so many people want it, um, me to sell the corals. But on the other hand, just listen to you on a, you know, on a personal level about some of the things that you're, you go through when it comes to selling corals, I don't want those problems at and, all. And I bet I for, for, I've probably forgotten more of like the, the drama associated with that than I even can, can recall. I mean, there, there have been times where people have like said, this coral's dead, and they send you a picture, and it's like what you see on the screen right now. <laughs> like they send a picture like that. It's like, what do you do? What do you do? Is, 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 is it worth the $15 to argue? Are you going to go back and forth about this like six times to try to convince somebody that their coral is still alive? Mm -mm. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a joy, let me tell you. But in the meantime, it is kind of fun for you guys. You guys went to Chick-fil-A? 
we went to Chick-fil-A. That was supposed to be what we were supposed to get. But when we got there, I would really still be there right now and not here. The line was unbelievable to the road. I don't understand what, what it is, but I went out and grabbed just some carry out before I got here. Mm -hmm. And it was like a, a swarm in the parking lot of like a bunch of different places. No, Burger King was dead. We were the only one in Burger mm -hmm. King. But Chick-fil-A, I don't know if they're running some kind of promo, some free stuff or what, but it was packed. You're lucky he has sleeves on. <laughs> I was going to show up at my tank top, but it's really cold. It's really cold. I wouldn't recommend that at all. <laughs> okay, so Rookie Reefer 787 Castro. How do we buy in the live sale? So, uh, assuming that you're in the United States, I will flash the instructions up here real quick. You have to go to TitleGardens.com, find the live sale link, and on there, you will see like the numbered list of corals. So if you see that number coral, for example, we are in item number 33, you would find it on that page, put it into your shopping cart, and check out. And you have to fully check out, otherwise you don't get it. Just having it in the shopping cart doesn't really do anything. And make sure you pay shipping once. It's $39.99, and it's free over $250. That, in a nutshell, is how to purchase. I need to get somebody just to do like this production side of things while I just like focus on on the on the on the chit chat and stuff. That's like the, that's what I need. And then have somebody to like be in constant voice contact with Ben so he doesn't have to shout across the thing at me. Mm. But basically I just need another person eventually. I might take that offer and because of the luscious new studio that's gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Well no, it was even saying just like so we, we have like a part-time person that comes every other weekend. Okay. And for whatever reason, it's like nine times out of ten, it's the weekend that, that we schedule is the weekend that he's not going to yeah. be there. <laughs> so we, we like successfully have dodged Michael. So Michael's been on these live streams before. So you've, you've probably seen him, you know, working the camera in the background and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But he's like, we've dodged him for six months in a row or something like that. It's, it's a coin flip. By the way, does that look good? That is all. Awesome. When I was here the other day, I checked that out. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that is nice. So I might have to have a frag of that. You don't have Superman Monty? I do, but it, it, it wasn't like that, and I have no more of it. Mm. Number 36. That's cool. You can get your frag. Yeah, like a lot of our, our Montipora have just completely, you know, taken off. I mean, and partly I think it's because we got our calcium reactors finally back online. And it's also partly because we're getting into the winter months, which in a greenhouse, it's a lot better than the summer. What did you get back online? Calcium reactors. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. We've Every always... Time? Calcium. I mean, it's not, it's not like it's new technology. How long has Calcium Act has been going on? Like 20 years? So you've seen a significant difference in um, oh, yeah. putting it back, back online. Oh, yeah. It, it's, it's, it's very noticeable. And, yeah. you, you can, and that's one of those things you can easily test with, like, uh, with test kits. Um, yeah, I mean, we were getting a lot of fluctuations, especially in alkalinity and stuff like that. And in one of our systems, we had super low alkalinity, like down to like 3.9-ish. DKH, not uh, what's whatever the other measurement is, where that sounds more normal. Uh, no, we were we should have been closer to 8 DKH. We were down to 3. So there's that. Uh, okay. Number 38. Thank you, Tidal Gardens videos. They're very informative, easy to understand. You're welcome, Gerald. Yeah, I look forward to having you purchase as well. And hopefully that all this stuff will still be alive and doing well. It's just never... <laughs> it's always a crapshoot there. Uh, so one thing I noticed on your, on your... Oops! On your live stream, compared to what we do here, mm -hmm. is like three quarters of, of your people are moderators. 
<laughs> we have a ton of people moderating. Yeah. I got like zero wrenches online. Well, it's it's easier when um, you get into some really good in depth comp- uh, conversations. Uh, you're not paying attention to the chat anymore at that time. So mm. having other people that prefer to be in the chat that's always on your stream that you you know uh, you know that they're gonna do you right and not whatever play around. Mm-hmm. It's good to have some of those people on there to handle trolls because trolls are real. They actually come in and do some crazy and say some crazy stuff. So um, for you though, because the situation, like you were saying, you would like to have somebody be able to be here for Ben. You can just focus on whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, having somebody else focus on the chat and whatever till you're done ranting or whatever, having that great discussion of a question somebody asked, mm-hmm. and then go back over there and skim through your chat. That's what I do, but uh, it's always good to have those wrenches in the play. Sure. I mean, we have several. It's just not a... Uh... Nobody's online. There's... <laughs> it's like they, well, you, well, the funny thing is most of my wrenches aren't in the hobby, strangely enough. They're like, they're like YouTubers or vacation buddies or something like that, but they're not like active in this anyway. So I think that's part of the, part of the issue. But you know, you see like the, you know, the, the same names coming up all the time. Exactly. Obviously like Rossi. Right. Who... We actually love Rosie. Didn't we have a conversation about Rosie once? Yeah, it's like, you know, it's yeah. like, I get it. Yeah. I get it. It's yeah. fun. Um, Roscoe's Reef with Scott. Yeah. He's a regular. Mike the Reefer, he's just, like, mm-hmm. I, I could, like, shout out, like, 30 people here, right? Type 40, obviously. Um, oh, by the way, somebody's asking about some Monty, like a beach bum Monty. I think we used to have something like that. Like the like the Phoenix ones, uh, we kind of killed some of those. They'll come back later, I'm sure. It's a little dark, Ben. Most of the time, yeah. It'll be that particular individual one. Sometimes it'll say like X10. And that means we have 10 available at that price. Number 40. You know what? I'm going to make Jamie a mod. How do I do that? Just go to her name. Where's she at? Yeah, I don't see her. Uh, hit a contact. Uh, post a, uh, a comment, honey. You're going to go to... One yeah, it's it's dots. one of those things. Oh, there we go. All right. And, and add, moderator. add moderator. Okay, there we go. So we have someone moderating. <laughs> okay, number forty-four. Do you have this? I think we talked about this last time. I don't. I don't. There's no way. Yeah. I that love really, those. That really stands out, so I know I don't have that. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> becoming one of my my fast favorites, and you can you know that it, this is like the right color because you can see it amongst all of those sitting in that tank right in the middle there. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's and it's super fast growing too. So I'm really looking forward yeah, to growing I need that to get out. Yeah, a piece of that too. It's a lot. Make Dave yeah. a wrench. Dave's Dave Nano Nano tank tank is very awesome. He's been with me from day one. And all right, I'm gonna add some more ranches. You will not hesitate. <laughs> So um, I, th- I think the, the, when I had um, some people actually actively doing chat for me, mm-hmm. um, I remember uh, one of my friends just banned like four people like in an hour. <laughs> but we, were, we had crazy people though. It wasn't just like somebody said something disagreeable. Right. It was like KKK Grand Dragon blah 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 <laughs> was like the username and was like saying all kinds of crazy stuff oh, on top wow. of that. So it was like, oh, okay, that guy does need to probably need to get banned in there. We had ISIS come in here. I think you did tell me about that one. Yeah, we we had we had several like insane people, like future president mm. of the KKK had <laughs> that. No, I, I think we haven't had all that. <laughs> <laughs> that was like the golden age of live streaming. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't around then. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that those guys got like hella banned. Luke Schnabel. There we go. Would you look at that? I showed up at the right time. There you go, Luke. What is up? Luke, you need to come visit me. We haven't seen you in forever. Uh, type 40, is there going to be any sort of Christmas live stream? This is as close as it gets. Do you want Rico to like wear some antlers or something? Because we can do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, here goes Ben. Uh-oh. Ben couldn't help himself. <laughs> so the, the, the Christmas thing, it's always a, a tough time period for us. Uh, logistically, because the week of like Christmas and New Year's, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so the the week between Christmas and New Year's is like there's no shipping dates anyways with FedEx. So like us doing live streams, like okay, thanks for purchasing all this stuff. Uh, we can't actually ship it until the New Year, past the New Year. So you get Reindeer Rico as like a as a fill in. I lost my frog skin. Oh, did you? Yep, I had one. Because of like, sometimes our stuff comes and goes depending on how crappy our systems are at any given time, mm -hmm. um, it's always a miraculous thing that these guys always seem to come back from the depths of despair. Like the time that we tried Aquaforest and failed, um, we still have that and we still have these guys, like these forest greens, mm -hmm. which are like, in my opinion, kind of like, they're kind of commonplace, but now they're developing like these blue tips and stuff like that. It's yeah, they're nice. very, I consider those a very common acro, but mm -hmm. uh, yes, I know what you're talking about as far as the blue tips. Yeah, so I, any time that they start to show that, that light blue tip, I'm, I, I get pretty happy with that because it, it's, there's no easy acro, but this particular acro has been through hell here over the years, just dealing with all kinds of different like you know, incidences of everything dying mm -hmm. occasionally, things like that. These guys have persevered. I love this coral, actually. It's probably one of my favorite corals. I don't know, it's just something about this birds of paradise. Mm -hmm. It's a really pretty coral. And they used to be super expensive too. Like they used to be, I don't know, like 60 bucks or something like that for an inch. Yeah, I don't get why. People don't well, enjoy any of the birds' nests, actually. Yeah. I don't get it. Like, they kind of fizzled out. Uh, were they ever really in, though? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Mm, that's a big question. I ain't even going to answer there, that. I mean, there, there's, there's certain corals that, are, that have never really been in, but they mm. eventually do come in, in fashion. Like, for example, I've never in all of my years in this hobby ever seen mushrooms be a thing until like this past year oh yeah like never yeah I don't. that know. was never a thing yeah i don't know if i if i know now what i know now back What's then i think i'd have oh, a, 50. Oh, yeah. we're doing giveaways guys you have two different uh eheim auto feeders um pretty much anybody that's been, that places an order of any live sale item so that's not even just a live sale during the live, live show. It's like if you have an, a live sale item in your order from this show, you are going to be in the running to get one of these things. And we'll announce the winner on Wednesday or something like that, if, assuming that we're on our game. But yeah, we'll randomly pick, pick a winner. Yeah. There's two of these available. And I also already told everybody on my, that's on my live stream. Oh, fantastic. What, yeah, so, you know, whoever spends... So well, sale. Yeah, and it's, it's we, we were talking about like 150 or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, it, change it. Doesn't yeah, matter. It doesn't matter. Like okay. if I was one coral for ten dollars, I don't care. Automatic placed into the drawer. Yeah. Otherwise I have to do all this extra math. I don't need that. Okay. So <laughs> there you go. There you I don't go, need guys. that at all. So the the super chat count? People that want to super chat you, does that count? That's spending money? If they're in the U.S. Well, the, the, the problem, the reason why I don't want to do that is because there's people from overseas in Super Chat, mm. and so I can't send it to them. Yeah, I always give them the rules. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, but see, but if they place an order, I already have a mailing address, you know? Right. That that's, yeah. that's kind of makes that simpler. Yeah. Uh, Luke, was that all the acros? No, we have a lot more acros. They're just more spaced out. Like, uh, so Luke, 
knows firsthand the joys of picking coral for this live show. It's not that fun. <laughs> it's actually like the hardest part of this live show. Oh, no, I'm good. Thank you. Um, it's like the hardest part of this, of this live show is, is picking the corals and labeling everything. So he has gone through and done all this picking. And so usually we try to like keep them in groups. So when I talk about a particular coral, I don't have to like keep on, you know, jumping back and forth. But now we talk a little bit less about the corals. <laughs> so um, I, don't, I don't mind jumping back and forth. So long story short, Luke, there are other acros, but they're spaced out kind of throughout the show. Uh, any non-photosynthetic? I don't think that there's any non-photosynthetic in this live show. Um, generally speaking, those tend to be way, way, way more difficult. So there are a couple things that we do have that might be non-photosynthetic that do well, but uh, we're growing those out currently. There, uh, we've got some yellow polyped gorgonians. How is the green pavona for you? Do you find a lot of people actually want that particular coral? As far as pavona go, I mean, pavona tends to be kind of like a low-key coral on people's radar anyway. Yeah, because I just found that, like, when people found out I had that, like, a lot of people wanted it immediately. Really? Green, yeah. huh? Yeah, that's, that's interesting. That's I was wondering if you go through the same thing, like, with your zingas. Like, I don't know. Like, uh... Not necessarily the green pavona. I think that people actually like the, the next one coming up, which is like the purple pavona a little mm -hmm. bit more, because that tends to be more uncommon. Mm -hmm. um, but no, not necessarily. But you, uh, you can never tell. At least yeah. I can't as to what people always are going to be interested in. Right. Like some of the things that get me kind of excited and, like, and really looking towards certain things, like mm -hmm. it, from my perspective, though, it's, I've seen so much that seeing something kind of off the reservation a little bit, you know, like a little bit quirky, not so common, but not necessarily like great looking, but different. Mm -hmm. That catches my eye. But I mean, my customers, like, like I have all the sales data for 10 years, right? <laughs> I know what people buy right. and they don't necessarily buy stuff that I love. And also it's not, and it's, it's, I'm not saying like, oh, these people are noobs. They don't really have any taste or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Like. Will Holland, he's the guy that has that other right. tank that you know we're doing the comparison. Mm -hmm. and he does the, all the aquaphor stuff. Uh, he actually has a very good eye for for stuff. But when he comes over here, I I never know what he's gonna want no. when it comes to acros. Like uh, you know, he'll ask me, what, what, you know, what are the new acros that are in? And I'll show him like all the ones that like I'm interested in, that I really love. And it's it's actually you and I probably shared some of the same sorts of like the that pink one with like the yellow tips and stuff yeah i mean that i need a piece of as yeah, well yeah <laughs> those are great right he wouldn't buy that one like that's not the sort of thing that he goes after and i'm like yeah that's that's, that's interesting that's interesting so you can never tell and it's so it's not just like a, a newbie thing i mean he's been in the hobby for 30 years also just has a completely different uh, aesthetic that he's going for mm -hmm. Like Samacora, like nobody gets into Samacora. Yeah, like there's all types of those, Samacora. But you very seldom see anybody with those in mm -hmm. a tank as well. Like no, it's uncommon. I don't even think I know one person. I don't even think that I, not even one person that will have that in a tank. Mm -hmm. For what reason, I have no idea. I think we have like three different types now. We've actually got like a, a purple one, and I think we have like uh, an orange one or something, right? Purple with orange dots. Yeah. <clears throat> Are you going to have any fungia plates or acans? Definitely acans, Nicole. Uh, fungia plates, uh, no. <laughs> That's a no. Uh, what are your thoughts about bubble algae? Do they ever smother and kill corals? Um, I don't love bubble algae. It's a simple fix, though. You just need a fox face, and, mm -hmm. and they're gone. Um, there's certain other tangs that you could put in. I'd, I prefer fox faces, even though sometimes they can get nibbly on zoanthids and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, generally speaking, it's an easy problem to solve. Where we have it, it's only because it's in a tank that doesn't have a fox face. Yeah, any predator for it. Right.
All right, Luke. Thanks for thanks for hanging out in that little short period of time. We will have to see each other soon. Uh, Lionfish uh, sixty five. Do you ship to the UK? No, I'm sorry, we don't. Uh, U.S. only. Emerald cla crabs love bubble algae. Um, yes, they can go rogue too. They can go rogue, and and, and sometimes like when I had uh, when I had a couple, they just died one day. Uh huh. And I just don't know what happened. They just disappeared, and they just never bought it again. Yeah. Not that they're expensive or anything no. like that. It's just like, what happened? I don't I, know. I would prefer a fox face over uh, emerald crab any day, just because these, that fox face is going to do a lot more than what that emerald crab is going to do for you. Just not, you know, just put any kind of algae. Even algae that the tanks may not even have a taste for. He will yeah. eat it. They, they just kind of eat, really do a better job, and I feel in a lot of ways than even some of the tanks. So, mm -hmm. oh, definitely better than tanks. Yeah. I don't think there is a tank that does a better job than a fox face. Right. So somebody's asking Rico, was there a time when you wanted to quit reefing? This is mind boggle one hundred. Just asking because I'm struggling with this. Only SPS. time I ever wanted to quit reefing is when I came out on YouTube. Literally. <laughs> really. <clears throat> I, t I took a moth off. <clears throat> Excuse me. I took a moth off because of YouTube. Uh, it really got to me. It got me uh, really frustrated just with some of the people. And I'm just saying. <laughs> this is like a, this is like a month ago or something. Yeah, this was a while ago. I like the colors. That but is awesome. That is an awesome piece right there. But yeah, just uh, dealing with um, idiots in a lot of ways. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Really, just got me so frustrated. I actually left. Like, I didn't. I didn't do nothing to my thing. I didn't. I didn't check on parameters. I did no tests for that whole month. Really? I didn't even go look at my tank. Literally, I, I, I'm usually always in a basement. I didn't. I don't even think I even stepped foot in my own basement. That's crazy. That is. That was the only time I was so over the top livid with just reefing or answering another reef question in my whole entire existence. That sounds crazy. But being a YouTuber, crazy. I think, is a lot harder than people realize, um, especially being like a small YouTuber, because it's not like <laughs> you're getting any, anything to put up with this. You're not getting anything. Right. It's. I mean, like bigger YouTubers, at least they can be like, "Well, this bought me my gigantic house in LA." Exactly. But everyone else is like just piddling <laughs> along, and it's so much time to put together like a well uh, produced. Uh, well edited video like mm -hmm. Coralfish 12G for example um, he told me like just kind of like the hours that he has to put in to do any video so people get on his case for making like clickbaity videos but here's the thing if you're gonna put that much effort into it <laughs> and YouTube clearly rewards clickbait they love that it's like they absolutely they're like, you know what, make it as clickbaity as possible. Yeah. And so he's like, I, so just talking to him, it's like, yes, he does the clickbaity stuff because after all of that filming and editing and all that stuff, mm -hmm. now I'm not going to get the views. Right. Nope. Here's going to be the most flashy thumbnail that I can put on this thing and just get those views because exactly. darn it, I deserve it. Exactly. And it's, yeah, he's not wrong. Off to get these views, if I don't make it clickbait, you guys don't really respect it, but if I clickbait it, oh my God, look, now I'm rewarded for all my time and effort that went into that Yeah, video. and I, I guess like part of the reason why I don't tend to do as much of the clickbaity stuff mm -hmm. is because I'm tied to a company, you know? Yeah, yeah you, so, exactly. Uh, because <laughs> that's not like making any judgment of the people who do the clickbait. They just kind of have to because otherwise YouTube just says, no, no one's going to see your stuff. Exactly. Case in point, uh, this, uh, this Japan video is kind of off topic right mm -hmm. this is a reef aquarium channel mm -hmm. and that's kind of like more like a travel vacation-y sort of thing with some reef stuff thrown in there it got half the views of a typical video half half See and, and i know that's going to happen because it is kind of this off-brand topic mm -hmm. so um who was i talking to oh, i was talking to somebody um the guy in the uk what's his name Aaron's Aquarium. Oh, right. Yeah, Aaron. But mm -hmm. I was telling him about like I did uh, last year. I did this uh, this video on diving with bull sharks. 
okay? Mm -hmm. Where I went down there 100 feet or like 80 feet, <laughs> hung out with these bull sharks, you know, all that, all that footage and everything like that. And it is the worst performing video ever in like at least two, three years. Wow. It's got 2,000 views. This is years ago. Like, anything kind of slightly off from your usual mm -hmm. will get like I have hammered. noticed I start I started noticing that anything that I different titles I choose to use or something or a little kind of off topic or mm -hmm. whatever you don't get the views yeah it's it's a total like hard filter there so it's kind of like I'm actually wondering if you go back to like some of those videos right mm -hmm. can you change the title of those videos would that improve what happens at that or is it too late it might not be too late, but the other thing is if, if, a, if some video is performing well and then you change something, mm -hmm. that resets it. So that uh, might be a terrible thing to do. If, gotcha. if something is rolling, it's like, it, just let it, just let it, just it. <laughs> All right. It's like, no, I want to put in the last keyword. You probably shouldn't do that. <laughs> probably shouldn't do that. Gotcha. Yeah. But like I said, it, it, it's, it is a lot tougher than people realize. To, especially now I mean like some people kind of are getting advice that might have been true about YouTube five years ago and YouTube now is a very different animal like a subscriber count is actually not that important now as compared to like five years ago or ten years ago right it's all about the views yeah it, and and watch time and like and, and, watch uh, time's and a big one. session creation after that so actually me promoting somebody else's video will actually help my video because i created another session thing blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> so stuff like that no people think that helping somebody else is like they don't get nothing out of it it turns out you might yeah it turns out you, you might really do get something yeah. out of it. You probably do better than the person you was actually trying to promote. Number 72. <laughs> Just saying. Love your Japan video, especially your journey video. Oh, thank you very much. Glad you liked it. Obviously, it was my it was my pleasure. <laughs> right. How is sub count not that important? I will tell you. So sub count is still meaningful, but it's not as meaningful as it once was. So if I put if I put a video out, right? I've got like thirty nine thousand subs, right? Uh, a tiny fraction of them will actually get a notification that there was a video. Like, mm -hmm. yep. it, it's it's a lot more now towards YouTube recommended videos more than your own subscriptions. Like if you notice, if you log into into YouTube you're not seeing your subscriptions. You're seeing mainly the stuff that YouTube thinks you want to see, and that's like their recommended videos and trending and all that other stuff. Mm -hmm. And so your subscriptions are actually kind of buried. And on top of that, if you're not actively watching some of those of the channels that you've subscribed to, sometimes they will unsubscribe you from a particular channel. That's what a lot of people are wondering. Why am I being unsubscribed? Mm -hmm. So that's a good point because I really didn't know and I wasn't sure until you just said that. Like, that makes sense. If yeah. you're not watching somebody's channel for a certain amount of time. And why are you, why are you subscribed still there? To yeah. yeah, exactly. It turns out maybe you're not. And, and th there's people that I am subscribed to now that I think of it that I don't really watch frequently. So, yeah, I don't even know if I am a subscriber of theirs anymore. But, yeah, that's kind of... So, I'm not saying that subscriber counts don't matter, but I will say that they've never mattered less than they do now. And that's kind of a, a page off of, like, Facebook's algorithm. So, mm -hmm. like, Facebook, they want you to pay for everything, right? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you, you have 10,000 followers on Facebook have fun no one sees your stuff because you didn't pay <laughs> right so like yep that's fine no one sees my stuff they definitely want you to constantly ask you to boost this and all this so yeah yeah all right so let's catch up on some of these little chat sessions here 
Uh, Than I dove with bull sharks in Jupiter, Florida. There, there you go. <laughs> I think it's a great experience. I, I was surprised at just how chill they are. Because, I mean, bull sharks are, are pretty dangerous. They can get kind of bitey. I really like this yellow parades. This is the best it's ever looked. I, 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 I'm dead serious. I haven't seen one that is this vibrant as this. They're, they're supposed to be canary yellow. And this is the first time that they look canary yellow. Yeah, I've seen it when I was here the other day, and I'm like, hmm, that variety's looking right. Man, you're looking sharp today. Thank you. Thank you. I try. How do you get rid of hair algae in a 30-gallon saltwater reef? How would you do it? Number seven. Um, don't say you would never just get it in the first place. That doesn't count. Oh, yeah. I, I get it every now and then. Just small cases of it. Um... And it doesn't happen in my main display. Nothing happens in the main display. The fish does the job. But in places, like you were saying, when it comes to Bible algae, where there's nothing there to disturb it, it does happen. Um, I, I do a lot of just manually remove it. That's all. Only time I ever get stuff like that is when, because I, I never don't do this, but I never really measure out anything. I eyeball everything just by the look of corals, coloration, and stuff like that. So sometimes I do go beyond uh, with really overfeeding the system. Um, and that's the only time that I ever experienced nuisance allergies. Other than that, it, it does not really happen. It's only when I spike nutrients in the system. Mm -hmm. So spiking over what the system is normally used to running. So when I decide to be smart and... So you just like scale back on feeding and stuff like that? and Exactly. Nutrient? Just scale back and it goes away. Um, What's nice is it's a small aquarium. So you can get in there with a toothbrush and you can, you can save your tank that way. Oftentimes like the advice that I give... It's for systems you just simply can't do that. Like, you have 500 gallons spread out over, you know, three different rooms in your house. So you, so you kind of need a more holistic thing rather than just getting in there with a toothbrush. But have you seen a system that's 500 gallons that has a bunch of different things and all this other stuff going that was truly overran? Well, I, in, in my systems that kind of add up to like 1,000 gallons, uh -huh. there's smaller tanks occasionally that just simply don't have anything in there and right. that's where like all the problems start but what about the main tanks the main you tanks are usually mean, fine fine it, right that's exactly how it is it's like why are they fine though because well there's, there's tons of tons of fish tons, tons of snails of exactly but in the smaller aquariums like it, you it, can't get away with yeah yeah i mean would you would you recommend putting a, a fox face in no. a 30 so like i wouldn't knowing that right mm -hmm. slowly work your way up what you're feeding until you start seeing a problem. If you do it slow and you start seeing a problem, then that's the indicator to back off. But sometimes, well, I won't say sometimes, it seems like a lot of people um, just skip all that, just to throw whatever as they walk by the tank, just throw something in because the fish are, mm -hmm. you know, acting all pretty and doing tricks for them for food. <laughs> Um, they forget to do that. They forget to actually balance out their own system, I feel like, meaning mm -hmm. learn their system and lo know what the, that system can tolerate as it's maturing and what it can. Um, slowly going up with the feedings till you see a nuisance. Then scale it back a little bit. And then if you want to, instead of one time a day, divide that same portion throughout the day to make you feel better as if you're giving more when in reality you're really not. You're just mm -hmm. giving smaller portions you'd be okay. Yeah, I could see that. Sometimes though, when when you see a problem manifest, mm -hmm. it's overcome some sort of buffering capacity in the tank. Mm -hmm. And it's like it it's like this cascading problem. It, it, yeah. So it does. Sometimes you need to be like drastically proactive and sometimes just cutting back on feeding won't necessarily stop the problem because it's starting its own like feedback loop of trouble. Yes, it will. So you, when you manually take it out, oh, there's nothing wrong with also at that time, um, if you're doing water changes, continue to do your water changes. Mm -hmm. But make sure you're physically removing what you can physically. Mm -hmm. I, don't, <clears throat> I don't necessarily like the toothbrush. 
I feel like when you're toothbrushing your stuff, you're actually smashing the stuff and like oh, putting back the nutrients back, like helping it release mm -hmm. back into your tank. Um, so I'm not a big fan of that method, but uh, I'm thinking like in a sink. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, in a the sink, then that's different. But physically removing it and then doing your water changes <clears throat> definitely will help out a lot. Just remember, anything that happens in the tank is pretty much your fault. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I don't mean to say that to be mean. It's always use our air. It's kind of the nice thing about, I guess, like keeping coral is that the, the, the baseline of success is the coral will live forever until you screw it up. So yeah, you kind of have that to work. It's like, oh, that, that coral, he died of old age. No. no. No, no, that didn't happen. That did not happen. <laughs> if that's the case, then we probably wouldn't have any actual reefs out there. Um, no, well, we're, we're, that's a different topic altogether. Yeah. We might not be having any reefs out there. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Hey, it's Haley. Should, should I make her a mod too? Haley is, is very cool. Um, I'm making her a mod. Mm -hmm. I've seen her a million times mm -hmm. before. So hey Haley, she's in the UK, right? Yes. I'm I'm handing out wrenches. Trust me, the best thing you've ever done today. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true, except dress up all dashing like. <laughs> you guys like my antlers? Yeah, They're check that out. I'm not doing the red nose, guys. I'm I, sorry. I think we have Christmas lights you can wear. <laughs> mm -mm. I'm good. He, he, he's, he's being a trooper, just, just being like a reindeer Rico. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wouldn't want to dress up. But then again, like on this channel, people... Come on. Yeah. Come on now. We dress up on this show. We got the bounce mushroom. Ooh. I am waiting for a time these, these lower in price. I thought Good that was I, I thought that was years ago. Good luck. It is not. <laughs> it is not yeah. years ago. I have a nice one in my tank that somebody gave me. Uh, Jeff Molinar, hey Than, I'm going on vacation. How long can you hold corals for local pickup? Uh, usually like about two weeks. If something happens, we reserve the right to um, to replace with something that's like basically the same. Um, but yeah, I mean, two weeks is kind of like the, the, the healthy cutoff, but at the same time, don't worry about it because, um, local pickup, it's fine. Sometimes it's harder to schedule for, for, for a shipment only because like we're getting into the holiday season and FedEx holiday shipping is like a problem a because of yes, their scheduling is. and b because of the weather yep so sometimes like the the weather will just basically say no it's a hard no to ship today if it's four degrees outside nothing's going out it's just also bad you idea and you're shipping are you raising the shipping you know they raise shipping right mm -hmm. so no i didn't but you, they do that every year yeah so i didn't know if you they just, just do that every year kept it the same or did you no well, here's here's the thing about shipping. So people are, are always asking, like, okay, a sometimes people think your shipping is just overpriced. <laughs> oh. Other times, but it's like, other times, you know, I'll say people say, you know, are you losing money on shipping? I'm like, yeah, I'm losing money on shipping, and they'll be like, well, why don't you just raise shipping to cover it? Mm. Well, it's like no, because this is a competitive environment. They're just gonna buy it from somebody else with lower shipping, and so it's like my shipping price is just at a point that like. I think that it's covering a fair component of what it's actually costing me. And at the same time, it's, it's almost like this partnership that shipping sucks. We both take some component of it. Well, actually, yeah. yeah. Because otherwise, you are more than welcome to send me a shipping label. And you <laughs> will have a panic attack when you see that show up in your credit card bill. Yeah. Because that thing is going to be three figures, guaranteed. Mm-hmm. For sure. But no, like, like, like FedEx ship, like increasing rates, welcome to every year. Mm -mm. Every year. It's like gas prices are down, shipping rates go up. Gas prices are up, uh-oh, shipping rates go up. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It's like they're always going to raise prices. Like what am I going to do? Right. 
And I'm at, I'm at that shipping volume also where... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Your shipping volume is probably where it's not going to... Well, no, my problem is for me to get like a significant reduction in shipping rates, I would have to ship out six figures worth of stuff. Really? Yeah. And not, not, not six figures in product. Six <laughs> figures in shipping fees that I put on my credit card for FedEx. That's with a comma, you know, like three numbers, comma plus three more numbers for anybody watching. <laughs> yeah, it's Six it's brutal. Figures. And so, like, that's why, like, my, my FedEx rep will be like, hey, I've got tickets to, like, you know, this PGA event. You know, would you like some, you know, would you like to? I'm like, no, I want you to lower my shipping rates and stop giving me golfing tickets. Like, come on now. <laughs> it's like, I bought those tickets. Right. Like, a hundred, and I bought your seven series BMW. <laughs> Wow. Like, I don't drive a 7 Series, I drive a Honda. Right. But you're welcome. You're welcome, FedEx. <laughs> and I can't even come in that much because like my, my supplier, mm -hmm. uh, 600000 something like that. That's, that's his bills. Ouch. Yeah, so he's like real cozy and friendly with his shipping companies. <laughs> like, can you imagine that? No. Yeah, but, but for, uh -huh. for me to save a lot more than what I do, it's going to be like... Big money. There's like tiers that, that you kind of get stuck That's into. Get, yeah, a tier. Yeah. And I've got a, a pretty good healthy tier right now, but yeah, the, the next one doesn't look attainable from Title Gardens. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Are you ready, hon? Is it that time? Well, thank you, Sam, for having me. Thanks for that coming. time, I have to go. I'm going to steal one of these, though. I, you can have them. I got, I got um, my Sour Patch Kids. Oh, there you Those go. Those are my favorites. All right, dude. You got that. So, we'll be in touch. Yeah. Appreciate it. I don't know if we can get Than to do these, but he probably won't. <laughs> we know we don't get him to do much of anything. Nope. I so. your mic's off. <laughs> and he's out of here. And I'm out of here. <laughs> We'll talk. Oh, I definitely want the. Put me up a piece of that Superman. Yeah, we'll hook you up. Huh? We'll hook you up. Alright. Have a good one. Alright, you too, bud. Bye, Jamie. Bye. Bye, Ben. Alrighty. <clears throat> okay. Where are we in chat? Let's get this chair out of the way. I remember when Than didn't like to miss a coral, but now, but now the time flies by. I like it better this way. Did I miss corals? I hope I didn't. I'm sorry. Yep. I seem to be on. I see. I, 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 it seems like I'm on pace. And then there was Than. <laughs> Again, I appreciate you guys for for hanging with us here. He's going back to Chick Fil A. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> And I apologize for eating, but he literally put a, a bag of Circle K gummy bears right in front of me. And then there was Than, yeah. I'm still dying after the Aquaman costume. I love that Aquaman costume. That was so much win. Um, Dalton, any luck with encrusting sponge growth inside your systems? Um, we have a lot of sponge growth. Oftentimes, the stuff that really grows well isn't necessarily the stuff that's pretty and nice to keep. So we, we have a bunch of different types. None that I would say that would be a super high priority to go after. I'm super confused. Was I missing labels?
Um, Than, have you ever grafted together different color Mataporas? Mm, I have a, I, I have not done it personally, but I do have some grafted ones. It is just a slight touch dark, Ben. <clears throat> Better, yeah. Like I said before, like the Montepores lately have been doing very well. And we're actually making pretty decent time. Uh, we've been on for, well, I, I did start quite a bit early. But we've been on for about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes. And we're almost halfway through. Almost. So is it true that corals are happier in the winter time? So it, it so is it true? Yeah, yes, definitely. Um, the winter time is like peak coral coloration as far as I'm concerned. This forest fire, uh, Montepore digitata, it's, it never really looks better than this, at least in, in, our, in our tanks. So John Rose, uh, that's orange strain of Monte, if you're talking about this one. Or, oh, I'm sorry, the one previous to that, Palawanensis. Hmm. So 40B. Saw a sponge yesterday. It looked like a Gorgonian. Any idea of what kind it was? Like red and white marbling. Those are typically called like tiger sponges, and they're very difficult to keep. Like I would look up a tiger sponge. Sometimes they're not even sponges or tunicates. Why is it hard for me to find coral like yellow Postulopora varicosa? I used to live in the Philippines and they're very common in the ocean. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Like the, the only types of varicosa that we find here are pink. And I have some that we've been, that, you know, we've been growing for a very, very long time. But we don't typically see that at the wholesaler either. Uh, let's see, do you sell everything that's on the live show? Try to. Uh, different shows have varying degrees of success as far as, um, as far as actual like percentage sold. So it's, it's always tough to say. I, I, t I, to be perfectly honest, I don't even like look at it until the next day. I just, <laughs> usually like my voice is kind of shot. I'm hungry. I just go grab dinner. Uh, put on Netflix, hang out with my cats at home on a Saturday night, and call it a night, and just like get back to everything tomorrow. And so, fair notice, if you're trying to email me about, about something, I might get to it Sunday. Let's see. Uh, do you re recommend a 75 gallon tank for a first tank? It's not bad. Um, I would, if you're, if you're considering a 75, I would probably suggest also considering a 120 because all the stuff that you need to buy for your 75 could also power a 120. Your skimmer, your return pump, your lighting, all that same stuff translates from that 75 to a 120 and you're getting almost double the volume. Um, it'll be a lot easier. So if you have that, if you have the, sp the front to back space for the for the 120 compared to the 75, I do the 120. It's okay though. I mean, I, I basically started with the 75 myself. Um, it was it's it's all right. It's okay. Doctor Walsh of Magic. Good evening, guys. Good evening.
And I apologize for chewing, but Rico brought all this candy. <laughs> and I just can't turn it down. After this vacation, I've just been on this eat everything in front of me binge. And I guess that hasn't quite gone away yet. <clears throat> and you and I just can already tell that like right after the show ends, I'm gonna pass right the hell out. I don't even think I need dinner, I just need boom unconscious. <clears throat> Tattoo Craze Ink Studio. Than's water change advice has saved my hobby. Thanks. You're welcome. So it's funny because um, because Rico you know, he's he's the big proponent of no water change. And I don't even know if he's necessarily recommending no water change. He's recommending a very large balanced system to the point where you don't really need water changes. Very different thing, right? So um, for the rest of us that, that kind of have to, to struggle along a little bit, water changes can save your butt. Um, if you do develop a system, and, and I think everybody is aspiring to develop a very balanced system, but at least in our experience here, our systems are always under some degree of stress and goofiness. There's a lot going on, not much of which is positive that we have to kind of always counteract. So like regular and practically aggressive levels of water changes. Um, really goes a long way towards uh, kind of fixing a lot of those issues that we have. And I, I would say that the majority of aquarists are going to be on more my end of the, of the husbandry spectrum compared to what Rico's got going on. I mean, I, I consider like Rico in like the tip top 1% of hobbyists. I mean, his, his tank, again, the calling card, it speaks for itself. It's, it's kind of hard to replicate. It's simple in theory. In practice, it's hard to, to, to replicate. He's been doing this for 20 something years. It shows, right? Um, and who knows, maybe I will take up the challenge. Maybe we'll, we will do like a tank battle <laughs> one of these days. Well, we'll both get our 12 foot tanks and just battle. <laughs> I'm sure that you guys would enjoy okay. that. Are you going to set up a planted aquarium for yourself? I have not kept a freshwater tank in over 20 something years. I'm, I, I love the way they look. I love it. But that is a skill set that I simply don't have right now. And I wonder if it's a situation of old dog, new trick sort of thing, but I don't, I'm not looking forward to the learning curve to do that. Say so what? Maybe Ben will set one up. He'll be my freshwater spirit animal. Whoops. Haley F has a wrench everywhere. She just she just got one. I, I was handing out wrenches <laughs> earlier. Luke Schnabel, I've not done a water change in about two months. That's garbage, Luke. You need to get on that. It'd be, it'd be hilarious if the last water change you did was here at Tidal Gardens. Enrico's on the road in chat, <laughs> so. Hey Rico, I'm, I'm gonna make you, uh, I'm gonna give you a wrench. There we go. Handing out wrenches. Hey Than, so this is Jake Lee asking. I just started Kalkwasser. I mixed two teaspoons with RODI and let it sit for a day. Then started noticing some crystals forming at the surface. Uh, any idea uh, why this is happening? Um, the area of gas exchange itself is reactive, so you're gonna see this like scum form on the, the top of the water. It's normal. Uh, what's his YouTube channel? Don't know who he's talking about. Rico's? Rico's Reef Tank. Uh, what number are we on? 114. 114. Okay, thank you. Uh, cuttlefish classifies a fish. Uh, cephalopod? Are cephalopods fish? Not really. 
They're mollusks. Actually, are cuttlefish cephalopods? Cephalopods are, are, um, they're, um, cephalopods are, uh, the octopus. <laughs> but I don't know if that is particular to octo octopuses or if it is also cuttlefish. I thought they were all cephalopods like that, which again are not fish. It's a, it's a mollusk, but is it a cephalopod? <laughs> Who knows? So somebody in chat, Google that. It's a cephalopod. Yeah. It's a cephalopod. Okay, there we go. Um. Halfway, halfway point. One fifteen. Okay. So what's my favorite fish? Uh, ben Rathford. My favorite fish is probably the copper band butterfly. They eat aptasia. And they have a ton of personality. I almost feel sad for them sometimes because I don't have them in big enough aquariums. But they're very, very, very personable and they do a great job in the reef. Tattoo Craze Ink Studio, wrench me please. All right. You are a familiar face. What's the wrench for? It's a, a moderator. They can ban people and stuff. I think that, sorry, 116? Yeah. Okay. It's very likely that I've been messing up numbers. <laughs> so we'll see. We'll see uh, on, on the, on the rebroadcast. I'll see how well I've done. Uh, I think that tidal garden systems are under stresses that Rico's tank isn't under. Greenhouse, bringing in a lot of coral, where Rico's tank is a controlled environment. Very true. Uh, temperature swings. Um, I don't think that Rico's reef tank has... Uh, five gallons worth of pollen dumped into it on a daily basis in the spring. <laughs> like, this is basically an open building come spring, summer, and bugs. Um, it's always fun on, so we've been here a little over 10 years, almost close to 15, I would say. We ran into a cicada year, and you just find bunches of dead cicada in the water. That was fun. So yeah, you don't, generally people don't have that issue. And you know, here's the thing: um, the wrenches for keeping out moderator uh, or keeping out or moderators keeping out trolls and nasty people. For the most part, people that are in chat are pretty good. I mean, we 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 banned a lot early, then but they were just like straight up crazies. But generally speaking, now it, it's pretty cool. Out of curiosity, how many? Ooh, that's pretty good. I just had, I just had, I had to check our peak concurrent number. It's one nine four. Pretty solid. Pretty solid, guys. That Rico brings all the boys to the yard. <laughs> and whatever, I'm not even mad because I got, I got all the gummy bears. So my mom is sending me some uh, text message pics of the uh, of the resort that they're at right now. It's like it is nicer than what I'm looking at outside. Go figure. Forty bucks for a sushi. Okay. So Rossi's Reef Tank, uh, that particular restaurant that, that I went to, if, if you guys like Google, Google if, if you're into sushi and you happen to go to Tokyo, this is kind of how this, how this goes. Um, you, get, you get off the plane and you are, again, kind of tired, get to your hotel, right? You're going to have the best night's sleep because you're going to be so tired after you know being on the plane for like 12 to 14 hours. You're done with the whole travel thing. 
the, the rooms in Tokyo are super nice. They're super comfortable. Take a shower, get to bed. It's gonna be like super relaxing, okay? Right around 3 a.m., you're gonna wake up. You are going to be super duper awake. Like you are not gonna get back to sleep and it's 3 a.m. So a travel tip. If you want possibly the best sushi of your life, you may as well get up, make your way over to the Tsukiji fish market, the biggest fish market in the world. And you will see people forming lines for different restaurants and stuff. And no joke, people are lining up at 3 a.m. for these restaurants that open about like 6, 7 a.m. And there is a reason. It's like these places are so ridiculously good. And you kind of had nothing better to do because you're jet lagged, wide awake. You had your, you had a, your restful night of sleep. And between the hours of three to six, there's really nothing open may as well just wait in line at the market and your reward for doing so is getting what amounts to a three-star michelin sushi breakfast for 40 bucks which in three-star michelin land like they're ridiculously expensive meals like outlandishly expensive i think the most expensive one i'm aware of is like 700 dollars um so you're getting like that level of food for 40 bucks but you have to wait in line we did it it was nice <clears throat> merry christmas and a happy new year and thank you very much merry christmas to you too imagine a live show for fish that would be harder that would be like very hard on the camera person yeah i mean it'd be like tiny tanks or something um i've tr i've done the whole uh trying to chase down fish and keep them in focus thing with the camera it's hard i don't enjoy that um luke where did they go Or if you mean me, I went to Japan. I was in Japan for 10 days. So yeah, while these Japanese restaurants are like Apple stores on their release date. So yeah, what is crazy is like, so this, we went on a Saturday. So that means they open at 7 a.m. Um, we showed up at about 6.30 a.m. because we actually were able to get back to sleep miraculously and then made our way over to the fish market. And still there's like these you know, lines forming all over the place. Um, and, and so we actually got in like a, a really, really short line for some tamago. That's like the, the, like the egg sushi. And this tamago is like so good. They make it right in front of you. You see it getting made. It's like fantastic. And it's like a dollar. It's not even, it's not even a dollar. It's a hundred yen, which I think is like 79 cents or something. And you get like this super fresh piping hot tamago. It's unbelievable. But then we made our way over to the sushi dai line and What's crazy is, as soon as we got in line, a sign comes down right behind us that says, we're the last for the whole day. They haven't even opened their doors yet. It's six something in the morning and they are done taking customers for the rest of the day. I mean, I would love for us to have that problem. People lined up outside the door. We have to put down a sign that says, no more appointments for the rest of the day, we're done. And we haven't even opened yet. No, no, no more calls for you. Come back later. That'd be awesome. Like only in places like that are so uh, population dense, like Tokyo, you could have such a thing. I mean, here, there's just there's no like people. It just doesn't quite work out. Which is, it it uh, kind of takes me to my other little segue. The number of of reef aquarium shops. Over in Tokyo, I guess there's not very many. I saw one 
I think there's only like a handful of them, which is insane because like, I, as I mentioned in my travel video, there are as many people in, in the greater Tokyo area as there is in the entire state of Ohio. And, the, and I believe Ohio is like the sixth or fifth, fifth or sixth largest state in the U.S. in terms of population. So you have this one single city and, and obviously like, you know, greater Tokyo area is like the largest city in the world. Um, and you have like no, no fish stores really. It's very, very few. Whereas like in the United States here, at least in Ohio, there's tons of them. I mean, within like an hour or two, I bet there's like 20 different shops that, that sell coral. Um, and many that just specialize in salt water. So what's, what, what just kind of like boggles my mind, going back to the whole population thing of, you know, and why like places like Skiji can work in Japan and have like lines that, uh, that go on for hours before they open, it's just because of like population density. So I get asked sometimes like, hey, I want to start up a, a store just down the street from you. Because there's, cause in, that, in that town, there isn't a reef shop. And I'm like, I live in the middle of nowhere. Down the street from me is still in the middle of nowhere. The reason why there isn't a reef shop is there's literally nobody that lives there other than like a couple of cows. Like there's nobody, there, that's why there's no reef aquarium shop. But Tokyo is kind of the, that exception to the rule. Turns out 12 million people, not enough. Okay, so uh, in, good point, so in Akihabara, which is kind of like their electronics district in Tokyo, you can find a lot of consumer electronics there, very, very bright, busy place. Uh, I saw like what looked like a, a small closet of a shop, and all they sold there was like pumps, like for ponds, like awaki and, and things like that, right, for, for yeah, basically ponds and things of, things of that sort, fresh water. And they didn't even have anybody manning that store. Like nobody was even there. But, they, but th this place is successful because every single day a million people will cross the threshold of that store. Like every single day. You, you can be successful in a place like that. And I'm sure that that person's probably paying 20 grand a month in rent to sell like their six pumps that they have on display with nobody attending them. Weird place sometimes. Uh, shook. So dwarf angels are reef safe? Not in my opinion. Uh, so no. Has anyone had bad experience with flame angels? Uh, yes, I have. <laughs> I have. Well, when we ran the meat shop in Greentown, we were so small. If we sold two cows, we closed the shop for the day. It only happened like four times. You know, there's uh, some insane coffee places in in uh, in Tokyo where they're like, you know, like how they take it to like this insane like samurai level of perfection, um, and. I've heard that if the coffee isn't right that morning, they won't even open. Now, I've roasted my own beans, so I can kind of understand because like the best time to have roasted the beans to the time that you serve, you grind and serve the coffee is about 72 hours. So I understand, but that's like the, the beans that were ground two to three days ago that are prepared for today's service. Something went wrong in the process and it wasn't good enough. They're, they would be like, we're not open, not good enough. So that takes some, I mean, can you imagine like being a store owner and just be like, you know what, it's Monday morning, it's not good enough. We, we're just closed. That's astounding to me. <clears throat> How's the coral price in Tokyo? Uh, I didn't even ask. I think that in my video you might see um, some prices listed on the on the glass, and so that's in yen. You just have to do the conversion back into dollars if if that's your local currency. So they might be all right. Are Blastomusi easy? Kinda. 
I'd say so. Not too difficult. On the easier end of large polyp stonies. Nine one five Mang shopping for new camera gear. No, <laughs> I am I am saturated. I am up to my ears in camera gear right now. I did, however, buy a new phone stabilizer, so I guess that's not completely true. Sorry. Uh, somebody was asking about butterflies. Are they reef safe? Very few. Most butterflies I would worry about. Most butterflies are actually like obligate coralivores, so they only eat coral. Is $45 for a trachea a good price? It is, assuming that it's okay. I mean, sometimes tracheas are kind of on their way out. <clears throat> I slow pour my coffee with distilled water, richest coffee I've ever made. I'll tell you what, coffee is one of those things you can like take the, take the deep dive into, go down the rabbit hole, into Wonderland. Hmm. Okay, so I'll get into the coffee thing in just a sec. So this Kenya tree, it's that X10 means that there's 10 available at the price of $7. I'm sorry, the font capitalizes everything, so it just looks weird, but that's what that multiple means. Um, yeah, so as far as like coffee goes, it's like um, one of my friends uh, got me hooked onto espresso, and I really wasn't much of an espresso drinker before he mentioned it. And after that, my French press just wasn't good enough. I went out and got an, got an espresso machine, and it's made a world of difference. Emmett Follett, love the stream. Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys could join. So, Eddie, is there somebody named Eddie that was, your location is relevant as some corals are harder to ship, etc. I'm sorry, I missed the original question there. Yeah, I guess to, to I guess to back up that point, location can matter as far as like corals being harder to sh like certain corals definitely do not ship particularly well, and and even in those situations, like we try to. Uh, to work out better methods to ship certain things. Like for the longest time, Xenia didn't ship well. It's one of like those notoriously poor shippers. But it's been, knock on wood, a very long time since we've had any issues with Xenia. Uh, Kenya tree is easy to care for, yes. Possibly the easiest to care for. So it says that we've been live for an hour and 15. Is that even possible? I don't think so. No, we must have had like a, yeah, we must have, we must have had a stream stop and start. Cause I think, oops, oh no, oh no, Apple. What are you doing? What are you doing to me? Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Just had one of those little freak out sessions. I feel like anemones and carnivore plants are related. That's kind of one of those like uh, convergent evolutionary things where like very similar traits from from very different uh, species kind of end up doing the same thing, right? Like I remember just in the fall looking at some trees and thinking, you know, if I blur my eyes, you know, like squint a little bit. It almost looks like I'm looking at Acropora with all the, like, the different colors and everything like that. It, there's a lot of, lot of plant-like qualities to, to coral. Uh, let's see, Than, thanks for the stream. Do you by any chance have any bubblegum digitata for sale? I don't think so. I don't think we've ever had it. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with that color. Now, there was a question earlier about lighting, um, and I think I missed it, but the person ended their comment with, like, you know, Team Radeon. 
I'm still uh, up in the air about what kind of lights to get for this new system. I mean, a lot of it is going to come down to cost, obviously, but at the same time, I'm probably going to get the cheapest price anybody pays for any of this stuff, because when you buy like 400 units of anything, you're going to get a pretty decent discount. But I'm interested to try these, uh, these experimental lights uh, over from Japan, whenever those come out. Um, Radeon Pro Gen 4s are high on the list. Uh, Orphic Atlantics, um, you know who likes those is my friend Nathan. He's got one of those on his um, frag tank, and he likes those more than he likes his souls, soul blues. And I love soul blues, as far as LEDs go. Now, the thing about his Atlantic, though, is that it was tricky to do any photography with it. It was very unforgiving when it came to, to shooting under. Um, let's see. Fan, do you have any strong opinion for or against deep sand beds? I'm thinking one could help with nitrate reduction along with the skimmer. I think it's good for like microfauna. Um, I think it... Aesthetically, it's alright. Um, as like... Uh, as like a main method of filtration, not so much. Like way back in like the 90s, there was this whole like methodology and and the person that was kind of promoting it was like very aggressive about how this is the only way to do it blah 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 and that turned out to be not that true so um since then deep sand beds really haven't been as much of a thing at least in the in the psyche of most hobbyists they're okay um and you're not supposed to siphon them, I'd siphon the hell out of it. I, I consider it an, an aesthetic perk. Ocean Revive lighting. Those are the kind that Rico used to have on his tank. Um, and actually, they shot fairly decent. I mean, when I was over there, the the video that I did of his tank. Sorry, that's slow on that one. Photography doesn't grow corals, lol, but it sure as hell sells it. Am I right? <laughs> Uh, so that is funny. It's like I'm Burmese and Than and uh, Than Than literally means one hundred grand and a million. That is true. So okay, so the the Thane part of my name just kind of got like slapped on at the end. Um, my name is actually like Than Tight. So that literally translates to worth a million. That is funny. Roy Cruz, thank you so much for the for the super chat. I, I appreciate all the support. I have a reefer 250 with eight peaceful fish, clowns, royal grandma, ras, firefish, cardinal. I'd like to add a blue fish, which one? Okay, so this is kind of like out of the box here, okay? I would get a Springer's Damsel. Springer's Damsel. Generally speaking, don't love damsels, but Springer's actually do, are, are not super high on the aggressive spectrum but they also do a very very good job with certain pests like things like flatworms things of that sort so that for like a a, a, a little blue fish that's probably what i would be heading towards are file fish reef safe um I heard they're kind of neither here nor there on that. File fish. Like, there's certain kinds that I know will, will absolutely nibble on polyps and stuff like that. So you kind of have to be careful. It depends on which, kind, you, which, ones, you, which ones you have. 150. Yeah, regular blue damsels, uh, Dr. Welsh, they are pretty mean. 
That sounded painful, Ben. <laughs> he hit himself on a stapler, I think. Um, yeah, there's definitely some jerk tangs out, or jerk damsels out there, and jerk tangs, but jerk damsels out there. But the Springers so far have been less ornery than most. It's a tad dark again, Ben. Yeah, it's better. Uh, Emmett Follett. Would a reef safe trigger fish go after cleaner shrimps? It's possible. Um, I certainly wouldn't put it past a trigger to take a to take a shot at one. Uh, John Albin, what's the how's the new building coming along? Slowly, <laughs> it's one of those things. Um, while I was in, on vacation, um, it's like that that Thanksgiving weekend, so a lot of the workers uh, you know had other engagements and stuff. So we made slow progress during that period. Um, and now that I'm back, things are getting a little bit more more in the flow. But at the same time. Um, we're kind of just working around scheduling and weather, so we're looking forward to getting our septic stuff put in, our septic tanks, as well as a 10,000 gallon rainwater collection cistern. So that's kind of like the, the, the next big thing that's happening. And the week after that, we're going to finally be pouring our concrete floor. What's cool about the concrete floor is it's going to have like a radiant floor heating in it, but once that's uh, starting to cure, we can start, we, the builders, can start doing the second floor because they need to be able to drive like a, a scissor jack up in there. And so yeah, once the concrete is done, second floor starts going in. Uh, Luke, yeah, did they get the heat and floor done? The, the heating tubing is in. Uh, floor is going to be a little while longer. Looking forward to it all. Yeah, there's a few different types of, oh, what do you call it, triggers that might be trustworthy, like cross hatches and stuff like that. Uh, but, I mean, if you're, if you're worried I don't know if I'd mess with it too much. Shook. What is a snack coral? So it's kind of an inside joke. It's a snake polyp, and there it's uh, the genus is an Isarius, Isarius polyp. Um, but they're called snake corals, and it's kind of kind of meme-like, so we call them a snack. Building in the winter in Ohio can be slow. Yes. And I don't mind. Like, so we're kind of in a very fortunate situation where it's not like, oh, we took out a ginormous loan. We need to keep everything on pace so we can launch at a certain time, so we can recoup this investment before you know they repo our house. It's not like that. It's really laid back. It gets done when it gets done. We wanted to get it done right. Frankly, the longer that it takes. The easier it is for us to actually pay the bills because, you know, it's like the the checks that we have to write for this building are kind of shocking. So it's when you kind of spread it out over, I don't know, a few months, it's not as bad because you, you had a few months to like build up a little bit more capital. So we're kind of, uh, you know, taking it slow. Did they say how many yards of concrete they're estimating? Nope, I have no idea. I have no idea. It's gonna be a lot. I mean, the the square footage that they're gonna have to put concrete on, 
it's what is it, like six inches at five thousand square feet. So you guys can do the math on that. Dan, any behind the scenes of your new building process coming? Yeah, but I think that we need to get to a point where we actually have some major things to show. I mean, there, there's like little things that I could show. I'm not excited about little things. <laughs> so, you know what, what's funny? I think that like Rico is, and, it's, and, and other people, I guess like just on the internet that are kind of following along, I think you guys are more excited about it, some parts of this than I am. Like I am, I'm excited about like stuff way down the line here. But I think that people want to see like all the all the little stuff that's going in here and there. And I've recorded it all, but to like sh do an update of all that like right now, I think I'm gonna lump it into like a more comprehensive video. Luke, building in the winter in Ohio sucks. Yeah, but in fairness. We're getting to the point where a lot of the building stuff is going to be indoors with heat and insulation. So it's going to be, it's going to get easier. Now, having said that, the electricians are totally screwed. Uh, when they trench that line in, since they were last, they get to dodge six other utility lines that are in there. Have fun with that. Johan M, what's a scientific name for the snake coral? Every time I look for a picture, I get pictures of coral snakes. Isarius. Isarius is, excuse me. Isarius is the uh, genus name. <laughs> Luke is not one of the muscle bound gym trainers. <laughs> Um, you are thinking of Sean, who has not been on the stream yet, but imagine some guy that looks like The Rock, and that's basically Sean. Are they reinforcing your poles with rebar fingers for the second floor? Nope. I don't even know what that is, but I'm going to guess no. Jeff Hall. Manganese? I've just... Huh. Yeah, so uh, Luke, um, many moons ago, used to work, uh, wor used to work here part-time. And uh, we miss you, Luke. You need to come back. <laughs> like my mom wants, my mom wants you to come back, Luke. You have to, you have to come back. So hurry up and get your school done. Um, oh, sorry, I missed this one. Jackson Estelon. Do you guys do international shipping? No, we only do um, in the US. I'm, uh, I'm like thinking of the thing that Luke had mentioned about the reinforcing the poles with rebar fingers for the second floor. I just don't even know what that is. I mean, here's the thing. It's like the builders, I've seen two buildings that they've done, including one coral farm that they've done. So it's not exactly like their first rodeo at this. So I can't imagine like, oh, all of a sudden, like we don't know what the hell we're doing. So I kind of like do defer a lot of a lot of the like the some of the building details to them for that, but no, they they've literally like this year did a building for a coral farm just like the one that we're doing. So it's not like this is like 
you know, wow, crazy, completely off the wall, different for them. I mean, they've done one before, and then I've seen their work product. It seems pretty good. So, yeah. But as far as like that goes, I'm just, I just don't, I just don't know. Hmm. <clears throat> I need to chill out on these gummy bears. No more. You basically build a footprint under each support pole with rebar. I don't know, but there's a ton of rebar in general. I don't know if that, if that answers your question. When we were excited by somebody tank build process, the, the, the build process of your core form was like, wow, just wow. It's a dream that probably won't come true to most of us. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, I always kind of like do have to, to, I guess, like be empathetic to that. Like, um, it's, it's crazy that, that this is even a thing, right? Um, if you would have told me just like 10 years ago that, oh, by the way, one day, uh, this is going to be a thing. We're going to be building a 10,000 square foot new new headquarters. I'm really like, that's impossible, right? That's impossible, but it's actually happening. So it's like part of it is like my, my excitement is tempered because of this sheer disbelief. And because there's no tanks in it yet, I can still kind of have that disbelief. But once we start putting in aquariums, I think it's going to become very real. And at that point, it's like, oh boy, here we go. And that is what I'm looking forward to. Some of these zoas are like mad looking, aren't they? Yeah. I think some of the ones that were more like recently fragged like that are a little bit more temperamental. And then you have some, so people sometimes are like, are, are get upset about uh, plugs that are like quote unquote dirty. Now there, there's dirty and then there's like more grown over. So this is what I would consider like an older frag plug that's been more grown over. Just as a shopping tip, you want your frags to look more like this than stark bone white. Because you want to make sure that that coral has been, at least has an opportunity to start really growing on there. Um, I'll tell you straight up, a, a clean plug looks better. It absolutely looks better. But the coral that sits on that, it's going to be much better off if there's a little bit of growth like that going on on the actual plug. Just a quick shopping tip there. And Rossi's taking off. So thanks, thanks for joining in, Rossi. Always good to see you. Don't be a stranger. <clears throat> yeah, and then some of these other uh, Zoas are just like super punchy. Yeah, I'll tell you what, nothing beats like wintertime corals here. There's just such a dramatic improvement in their, in their coloration, in, uh, in how much they extend, all that. Shook. <laughs> and I said, no more gummy bears, there's, an, there's another gummy bear. Shook. What rock do you recommend to start with? I'm on the dry rock to start with train because I like to eliminate as much risk of deleterious hitchhikers as much as possible. A lot of people though, like Rico, 
uh, are big into the biodiversity, makes up for the risk of hitchhikers, and he re will then rely on his cleanup crew slash wrasses slash tangs to take care of any problems after that. I'm not going to say which one is necessarily a better perspective to take, but I mean for me, my comfort level is in starting from like a completely sterile baseline um, because as far as I'm concerned, removing like the risk of one potential outbreak of something is worth its weight in gold. Also, it's like my livelihood is attached to this. So if, if, if there's an outbreak here, which there have been, it sucks. It really like sets back the entire operation. And you know, there's like, there's people that, you know, they're, they're, they're other, it's not just my livelihood, it's other people's livelihoods now. So I can't be like quite as cavalier about uh, like uh, fresh live rock from the ocean and stuff. It just to get, kind of just get that all the biodiversity. It's like, actually, I don't really want any of that biodiversity. Can we just be, just, can we just be rocks? Please, can we just please be rocks? <clears throat> the owner is a very nice guy, plus he's setting up a 900 gallon reef right when you walk in. That is a very large reef. Don't know who you're talking about, but that's a very large reef. So one of the things that I was like worried about um, in starting up this like really big coral farm, right, is like the humidity involved in all that water. And then I came across this um, this video of a guy in Ohio. I don't know if you if you are familiar with this uh, particular person, but it's like it was like Ohio Fish Rescue or something like that. So in a different window, go look up. Ohio fish rescue there's like this guy and he's he uh, basically takes in freshwater fish that really shouldn't never have been sold to begin with it's like it's like um, stuff like giant catfish and and shovel nose cats um, you know, ginormous paku and things like that right should never have been sold in the first place and now they need a public aquarium public aquariums don't want them so he started this fish rescue thing, and I'm not sure if it's like a store or if it's his house or what, but in there is some of the largest tanks I've ever seen, all like in really close proximity. And whatever that guy is doing to keep the, that water volume from just eating the building, I'm very interested in seeing. Because I mean, I think one of his tanks was every bit of six feet from floor to ceiling. It was just this giant aquarium display. I've seen his house. It has like 10,000 gallons in it or something crazy like that. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. He has the best mullet ever. Yes. Welcome to Ohio, guys. <laughs> Welcome to Ohio. That's like... Everybody here has an epic mullet. It's not true, but it's not that far off from the truth. <laughs> So, yeah, that's a cool thing that he's doing, by the way, to, do, to be just be able to, to take care of those fish like that. But yeah, huge fish, huge fish tanks. Um, I can't imagine what he's doing just to keep that humidity in check. But yeah, and, and I, I haven't figured out how many gallons that I'm going to have. Um, It's gonna be fun because uh, I, I'm just looking forward to when we get out there, just with some uh, with some tape and just start marking off areas, and then we'll start actually you know building up the framework and just kind of like seeing about elbow room in the building, making sure that we're not like 
you know, making it too tight to actually work around. That's the biggest mistake that people make when trying to like plan a, like a coral farm or a facility. It's like the most important areas are actually work areas, not tanks to hold stuff. It's really tempting just to have like every square inch of that place be aquarium, but you really want to um, to think about the efficiency of the floor space, making sure that two people can walk past each other side by side carrying buckets, things like that. Like most people don't think of those things and they have like this ultra cramped place that's just like miserable to work in. Um, the location and number of sinks, super important. Location, number of tables, that sort of thing. So I, I really am looking forward to getting out there, measuring stuff out. And, and making even like some some PVC uh, squares, you know, like those big PVC squares and just like setting them here and there just to see what it looks like in 3D. So you see how like working around that space would be. Dan, does selling coral take away from the joy of the hobby? Do you feel still feel like it's a hobby or is it just a business now? Um, Honestly, to me, it's it's less of a hobby. I guess it hasn't really been a hobby of mine for a very long time. I was trying to think of the last time I had an actual home aquarium that was like a show tank for myself. And I think that we have to go back about 20 years. It's been that long since I've had a... What? Mm -hmm. Technically, I set up a zero-edge tank in my living room. I think it lasted 24 hours before I took it down and sold it. So does that count? That was... Eight years ago, something like that. It was a long, well, I don't know about eight, but it was a long time ago. Any plans for a drunken uh, opening party, grand opening party? Maybe. Um, okay, so I don't know how many of you guys also follow Rico's stream, but he wanted to try to do something like a um, like a barbecue, right? Because his last barbecue thing went so well, right? But um, I think we're going to do something like that. Probably, well, we were thinking spring, but maybe better would be fall because there might be stuff that's more done in the fall. It might be more more interesting to see. Um, so we'll work out like a, like a barbecue get together. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, put the guest list together and see who wants to show up for something like that. I know some folks that are not local to Ohio want to come. What was that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the raffle off golden tickets. <laughs> um, let's see. Dan, do you think a deep sand bed is still a good idea since other methods like filter media can replace nitrate? I would do deep sand bed not necessarily for um, any, really for filtration or anything like that. I would do it to expand biodiversity, which again complements filtration, but it would be more um, more towards just like increasing like the buffer capacity of your tank with. with you know, that's interesting, Ben. Um, I've never seen that coral with the green base. I know, isn't that weird? That is super weird. Hmm. Learn something new every day. Yeah, so we'll, uh, um, we'll, we'll do something with the whole barbecue thing. So a former business partner of mine uh, had left the whole reef aquarium hobby to do uh, competitive barbecuing. And I think it, his team is like one of like the top 10 teams in the country now. Uh, what are your hours? We do not have any open hours. Uh, we're only open by appointment. We're generally pretty flexible, but we don't have regular walk-ins. Dan, I'm replacing my pink Fiji sand with reef flakes. Tips about how to go about doing this? Um, I'm not really sure what reef flakes are, but if you wanted to replace a substrate, what I find is the most helpful 
is just to straight siphon the old substrate out. Just, uh, just start a siphon and just start going to work. And just slowly, like water change after water change after water change, just constantly take the substrate out. And then from that, if you wanted to then um, introduce new substrate, make sure it's super clean to the point where it really doesn't create a dust cloud. And I, I would sh you know put it down like a like a PVC funnel, right to the bottom. Any euphilia today? Um, not many, but I think we've had a couple. The Crown Royal in KC is awesome when it comes around. So much BBQ, competitors from all over the country. I think he's been a regular at that event. Um, I forget the team, his team name. It's like Slippery Pete or something. Yeah, Slippery Pete Barbecue or something like that. But yeah, he wins a lot of awards. A lot of awards. Uh, do you get upset when someone makes an appointment and doesn't buy anything? Not usually, because it doesn't really happen that that often. And I'll, and to be perfectly honest, these days Ben typically handles the appointment. So no, I think it's fine. <laughs> it's like you came here, you know. I all I had to do was either I don't know, like walk around my own place or stay inside. I'm not bitter. It's it's very uncommon. Sorry, I'm checking something real quick. Difference between a sun coral and a black sun coral. Um, I think they're both. <sighs> One's a tabastria, and it's unclear if the black one is going to be a tabastria also. I think sometimes that's dendrophilia, and dendrophilia tend to be a little bit more difficult to keep in my experience than, than a tabastria. They're very similar care wise, just one is going to be more sensitive than the other. Uh, Okay, we'll make this last little announcement here. But for everybody that's been purchasing, you are automatically entered into a little raffle for one of these guys. So this is, oh, look at that, it's transparent now. But it's an Eheim fish feeder. Or its bigger brother, this guy, the Eheim fish feeder. So the model numbers, I don't know, 3582 twin on the big guy. And the 3581, I guess, is the uh, the solo. So we will announce winners probably Wednesday, and we'll ship those guys out FedEx. Not overnight with your corals or anything like that, but you'll get one. We almost never do giveaways, so it's something. It's a start, right? <clears throat> Two oh one. We're coming on the last stretch of thirty corals, I believe. Um, any plate corals, Jake? No, I'm sorry, not this time. If you can't find a frag you want to title guards, I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, I mean that's kind of the one of the things about this place. If nothing else, there is a selection. It might not have every like a very specific thing that you're looking for, but if you can find nothing, I think you would have that similar experience elsewhere. 
And I'll tell you what, if you have that same experience the year after, I don't, I don't know what to tell you there. We have, we're going to have a lot of cool stuff. <clears throat> Are green bird wrasses reef safe? I don't think so. Not sure, but I don't think so. Yeah, so there a lot of people are, 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 well, a lot of people are expecting, because I think I said that we were doing this. One of the first tanks that we're going to be trying to set up there, other than like the, you know, the quarantine tank and setting up like a show tank, but the actual farming activity, I'm thinking that we need more than anything else, uh, a very serious like SPS tank, mainly for stuff like Acropora. Like, our Acropora and Montipora look great right now. Best it's looked in a very, very long time. But it's it's less consistent here than I would like, and that than they would like. Uh, because when summertime whips around, the temperature changes, the lighting changes, it really messes with stuff, especially Acro. So, the having like a much more stable, much more controllable system in the new building would do wonders. And also just the sheer size and scale of everything that's going to be over there is going to allow for a lot of a lot of variety that will be able to grow in in very healthy numbers. Sometimes what what we have a problem with here is we have so much stuff already just jam-packed in here that even when we want to frag something cool, we don't have any space for it. So we don't even have enough um, of an opportunity to frag some of the stuff that we want because it's already kind of crammed. So, I don't know. When the new thing is up, I'm looking forward to a lot of the opportunities that it's going to offer us. Rico's Reef. What's the temp up there? It's like 26 in Dayton. I think it's cold. Let me look. It says it's 30, but since the sun is going down, it feels worse than 30. And I don't think it's it, it it's um I don't think it's snowing. And so we have 10 frags of of Kenya tree at seven dollars. So Ben, when you took a peek outside, was it snowing? No, it's not snowing. Not snowing yet. You've taught me so much about corals. I ended up selling many a coral from my LFS just because of the information you've taught me in your videos. That's great. Selling many coral from the LFS or to the LFS? I just looked through all 206 items and didn't find any affilia. Um, What's up? 206 is a red and teal black blue uh, well. Right, no, he's saying that he looked through all the items and didn't find a euphilia. Oh, because they're, they're, oh, they're coming up. <laughs> That's why I didn't see any. Um, uh, it's 210 through 213. Um, going back at 208. Okay, 208. So coming up. There's not a lot of euphilia right now, period, in this place. So I don't know what this looks like on the YouTube end of the uh, end of the spectrum, but this looks absolutely crazy on my end. So unfortunately, like YouTube kind of messes up the quality that you see compared to what we see here. But this one looks nice. Are you going to get more acros of the new building? Never mind. LOL. Yeah, we are. Um. Yeah, you know, I'll tell you what, I need to make sure that I have some gas um, because one of the joys of, you know, being like head chef and bottle washer or whatever that phrase is, 
is like, you know, people say that, oh, it, it must be nice that you have like all these workers to do all your stuff. Well, there's one instance where that definitely is not true. And that is in the early morning when I need to clear off the driveway so the employees can show up. So if it's like a blizzard here, um, that's me at like 5.30 in the morning going out there in the dark to run the snow thrower. And if you've seen my driveway, it's big. It's like 300 feet of driveway that I have to snow throw in the dark, in the cold, and the snow before anybody can even show up here. It's brutal. So yes, I have to make sure, I note to self, make sure that the snow thrower works. A little bright. And Luke, if you have frog spawn for trade, we can talk. That goes for anybody local, by the way. Any euphilias that people wanted to talk trade, store is open for trade. And that's a standing offer forever. Main reason for that is importing euphilia, not a lot of fun. Getting imported euphilia, very, very sensitive. Heated driveway, no need to shovel. I think I would need like a million BTUs to keep my driveway clear. Well, I would love it. I don't even know if a million would do it. Probably not. Because we, um, we had to get a, a new gas service here. Um, and I think it was like for 1.5 million BTU or something like that. Because a typical residence will get four pounds of, or no, 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 it'll get like four ounces of natural gas. It, like that, that's like the pressure or something like that, four pounds. Um, and I think that our line is like, no, 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 four ounces. I'm sorry, I keep on saying pounds. It's four ounces as a typical home. Our service is now two pounds. So it's like every bit of eight times the amount. Dan, did you eat all those gummy bears yet? There's like a dozen left. <laughs> I've eaten almost all of them. Part of my shirt is getting filtered out. Nah, that's just how it looks. <laughs> that's the new style. Yeah, like the thing about euphilias is that when established, they can do really, really well and grow like gangbusters. Uh, for stores, it's very different. It's it's hard to uh, to find a good regular source for them, and then to be patient enough to grow them out. Um, larger volume places, and I'm not even saying that we're necessarily even a large volume place, but they, it, it's it's harder to make room and keep those long term. A, because they're, they take up space and they're slow growing, but also a lot of uh, certain ones from like different geographies like Australia, they're susceptible just to an illness and then you lose like a whole bunch of them that you had. So it, it's tricky. 
And so that, that's why, you know, whenever we can find locally grown euphilia, very open to doing like some buys and buy sell trade with all that stuff. What's more reef safe, a copper band or a file fish raptasia? I'd say a copper band. Uh, Ira, how long before the new building is done? It's a good question. Um, it could be a little while. We don't really have like a solid timetable on that. Uh, the building should be done in a few months maybe. I don't know. The big question is right now electric. I don't know when electric is going to get done. That might be a small minor disaster waiting to happen. I just have a feeling that one's going to be tricky. Uh, but as far as like the building itself, we're it's now, and most of that should be done. Yeah, brown jelly disease is one of the many things that can affect euphilia. Um, there's quite a lot of others that that plague that type. So real quick in chat, is anybody doing any holiday travel to any fun or exotic places? I've already done my travel for the most part. So I'm curious if you guys have anything cool happening. Okay, so Oris DOA, do I add the live sale shipping and then choose local pickup when checking out? Um, just make sure that you've paid for shipping once. That's all that matters. So, um, if you just if you haven't paid shipping at all and have been selecting live sale the whole time, just live sale shipping and it's, it's you know zero shipping the whole time, and you're under two hundred and fifty dollars, just make sure that um, you you purchase the oops. You purchase the shipping module, but if you just left it at like fixed rate shipping, which is automatically puts in that thirty nine ninety nine, then obviously that like you've paid for it once. I know it's confusing. It's kind of you just kind of have to work with the the free website that we have. But long story short, you want to make sure that you've paid shipping once. So as long as like one of your receipts has that thirty nine ninety nine for shipping in there, you're good. And it, and if there's some confusion later and you haven't paid for shipping. I'll just send you uh, an, an email with the link that says, hey, please uh, purchase this. Ernie Wallace, Miami, if that's exotic. Um, it's funny you mention that. My friends are trying, the same friends that I went to Japan with this past week, they want me to go with them to Miami um, after Christmas. I'm on the fence. They love going to Miami. Um, and I haven't been there since LeBron left Cleveland and went to Miami. So it's been a while. What's that, 2000 and 2007-ish? I don't, I don't even know, 2010? Uh, Noah, if I am over 250 and want to buy a non-live sale coral, can I select live sale shipping? Yes. Yes. You you can um, you can mix and match from the live sale and from the website if they're just regular items. Okay, real quick, I'm gonna go over the rules. So since I'm getting a lot of questions last minute, here's how it works. So to purchase coral, you go to TitleGardens.com, and there's a live sale page. You can navigate to it in the top left you'll see like a blinking red dot that says live sale click on that and then you'll see like a page that has a bunch of like the, the numbered items so currently we are looking at item number 224 the orange and purple scalemia okay so if you wanted to get this orange and purple scalemia 
you find item number 224 on that list, put that into your shopping cart and just check out like normal. Now when you check out, you have to, to actually, to A, you have to actually check out, otherwise you don't really get the coral. Just having it in your shopping cart doesn't do anything. You have to finish the transaction. Uh, shipping is going to be a flat rate $39.99 and it's free over $250. But like I said, you have to check out with it to get it. So if you have to place multiple orders, select the live sale shipping option. That way you avoid getting charged multiple instances of shipping. But at the very end, just make sure that either A, you've paid for shipping once, or you are over $250, at which point shipping is free. And if you kind of mess that up and you either pay for shipping twice, something like that, don't worry about it, we give refunds. Okay, so that was on item number 224. 225. All right, moving on to 225. It's another scroll here. Yeah. And these scrollies are looking pretty good right now, uh, if I do say so myself. <clears throat> okay. So what's your favorite and least favorite SPS? I don't know if I have a least favorite SPS. Uh, I don't know if I have a most favorite SPS now that I think of it. We actually have some really cool Acropora for the first time that are showing really great coloration. So that definitely has, has piqued my interest. But if I was to pick anything, it's probably like um, some really, I guess, quote unquote, high end Montipora palawanensis that have like just amazing like sherbet like coloration 226. 226 we're almost done you guys almost to the end of this mm -hmm. Ryan Malloy just picked up some zoas from the regular site first purchase looking forward to the experience fingers crossed thank you very much um, we're probably going to be doing most of our shipping to Monday and Tuesday. Uh, I think that later in the week it might be a little bit too chilly. Um, so that's kind of the tentative time frame. <clears throat> we will email you shipping details, of course. How do you deal with green cyano in a 65? When in doubt, you can always do a water change, but oftentimes that type of problem stems from an excess of nutrients. So you have to really look at how much you're feeding versus how much you're taking out in the form of skimming and water changes. So something is like out of balance there. What I would do is do some more aggressive, um, some more aggressive like water change of things, things of that sort. And you can even try some physical removal, but it doesn't work out quite as well for, for slime algae like that. All right, I'll see you later, Luke. Um, you know what, Luke, when, when you fit it into your schedule, um, just, just plan a visit and we'll talk. I know you're super busy with, uh, with building and also with, with school, so I get it. <clears throat> Almost done. All right. So the next two items are codium, which is this, this macroalgae. We always offer this at a discount on the live sale, sale it seems. So this stuff uh, is just a dollar if you just wanted to fill up your, your refugium with it. And lastly... We've got some bubble tip anemones, which you can see here. And there's 10 of those available at $50, which is like a, I don't know, what is that? 25 or 30% discount, something like that. So anyways, guys, we made some pretty good time. I was expecting us to go all the way to five o'clock for sure, but 440 it is. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the December live show. Um, a quick shout out to the Patreon crowd here. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, these guys uh, have all donated up to the $5 level, and so they get a shout out during this live stream. So thank you very much, Mark, Alan, 
Trevor, Kevin, Mark, Samuel, Phil, Robert, Ryan, Dave, Nate, and Steve. So again, um, if you're interested in Patreon, it's like kind of like a, a tip jar for YouTube creators. You can go to patreon.com slash title gardens. Um, anything else going on? I'm not really sure. I think we pretty much hit it. We, we went over the rules. We hit up Patreon. Oh, thanks to the guys that had put in super chat donations. Very, very nice of you. Um, and we don't have another live show officially on the books, but I hope to get one going um, probably like the third week of January is what I'm thinking. Because we kind of have to dodge the, the, the holiday shipping or lack of shipping schedule that's going on with FedEx. So, yeah, we'll work around it. But sometime with a, with a healthy buffer away from the New Year is what I'm thinking. All right, guys. Thank you so much. As always, happy reefing, and I will see you all next time.